greatness begins as a mere spark. Forged in conflict. And greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome back to the Soul Citizens on a Sunday. I am Griffin Gaming RPG, and we are happy, happy, happy to have you all here today with me and my co hosts who I have with me today. I have Dark Knight 75. What's up, DK? What's up? How are you guys doing today? What's up? What's up? What's up? I see what's up is that uh, Genesis Starliner behind you. That's what's up. <laughs> I see. She's a beauty, ain't she? Yes, she is. Yes, she is. <laughs> and also with us, we have the man himself, Cal Roddy. How are you, Cal Roddy? Hey, Griff. Hey, everybody. Everything's good. Glad to be here. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, let's uh, let's give some shout outs to some folks that we got here. I said I'm going to start doing this. So because some of these folks are like here right at the very beginning. Uh, we've got, let's see, Alto is here. Is it Bun Bunson Bunson Bunson? I think it's Bunson. Uh, Fat Docs Eight. Uh, Just a Limming. Pops in Space. R R Ryuka R Rikush. I can never pronounce his name. I know. Rikushin. Rikushin. I can, Rikushin. Thank you, Rikushin. <laughs> and Von Cody Schweitz is here. Thank you all so much for being here on a Sunday with us. We appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, listen. We just watched the Invictus Twenty Nine Fifty Two trailer. Mm -hmm. uh i'm not gonna jump first because i'm gonna see if y'all caught on to some stuff tell me what was a couple of highlights in there uh cal Roddy, i'll start with you since you last one what were a couple of highlights you saw in the uh invictus trailer space whales oh you saw the you saw the easter egg huh you saw that little easter egg that little easter egg in there huh okay oh yeah 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 <laughs> yep okay we had little space whales for those of you who didn't see it go back and watch the video Last, what, three seconds, maybe four seconds of the video on the left like side, that. you see two space whales push their heads through the clouds. Uh, DK, what about you? Let me come to you and I'll come back to Cal Roddy. There was something you saw in there that stood out. Obviously, we saw the Scorpius in there. Ah. Was, we already know that's out there. So, okay. Okay. But okay. Who knows? We might see something else coming along. Okay. But we're not going to say nothing. We'll three or craft on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Cal Roddy, anything else? You see anything else in there that stuck stuck out to you? Um, a lot of things that. Well, we. I guess. What, what I also want to say is that there are some, you know, improvements from the last Invictus in terms of their presentation, in terms of the F8 and those things. So mm -hmm. some old ones, but things that we, you know, we just kind of want to get in our hands as soon as possible, too. So okay. that mm -hmm. F8 especially. Okay. Okay. DK, I give you one more. Was it something else that stood out for you? Man, I have to look through it again because I did. Uh, you know, those Easter eggs are in there. Okay. <laughs> like, I've seen everything and he was, he was I know. <laughs> I got to look through again and just be like, what was in that? You know, what were in those? Uh, I, I know we saw a Banu in there. Was that a Banu? I don't know. Was, was there, there I don't the, know. that they were shaking hands? Oh, um, oh with the oh, sand. Yeah, yeah. There okay. you go. That was, was one. one. Yeah, that, that was, was one. one. There you go. The armistice has been signed. Yes, was they one. were shaking hands. So good, that was uh, that was a big one. Mm -hmm. Good one. All right, I'll give you two things that I loved about this one. One of them was mm -hmm. atmospheric flight. That was cool. The javelin, mm, yes. everything down at atmosphere was very cool. 
But the big one for me, Cal Roddy, and I'm surprised you didn't say it. I know you saw it, but you didn't oh, say man. it. <laughs> they were showing off elemental tech. This thing opened up with oh, fire, water, gosh, ice, you. and air. I just, yes, it opened I up with fire, that. water, ice, and air. That lava was flowing oh, at man. the beginning. They did the whole thing with the ice forming, and it yeah, looked amazing. Ice, yeah, it, it looked yeah. amazing. It looked really, yeah. really good. And so, so many talks about that. Well, you know, I, you know, there's been so much talk about. Uh, and folks, we are getting to the topic today. We're just hitting on Invictus because <laughs> it's Invictus. Okay, <laughs> there's been so much talk about whether or not CIG's engine will be able to keep up and produce, right? Especially in light mm -hmm. of the new uh, IE5 and all this. You know, th there's a lot of stuff going on. People are curious yeah. about. And I was really happy to see when that came up. Uh, and I and you know because many of you all know that in Pyro there was a planet that was our good buddy Colossal calls Mustafar from Star Wars, but there's a lava <laughs> planet. And yeah. you know, be, them being able to recreate that is, is something that's really important. So when I saw that, man, I said, man, look at what they're doing here. This tech, this is not the river tech that we see now. They've got this whole nother level of what water and ice oh, and yeah. stuff is gonna look like. So mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. charged up. I was charged up about it. Uh oh, what video he said we talked about? You haven't seen it. We just opened up with it, Calf. Ooh, the um, come on, yeah. there's a new trailer that came out uh for uh, Invictus. I got it for you, Calf. Yeah, we'll put we dropped it. We dropped it in there. You go, DK just dropped it in for you. Check it out. Just watch the rest of our first few seconds, and you'll see what we were just, just talking about. But yeah, it was Good beautiful, stuff. beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Okay, well, again, thank you guys for being here, Citizen Czar. Thank you for being here as well. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Um. As you guys know, we've been doing the series on uh, on uh, careers, and we've been taking on these different careers that CIG has talked about. Uh, some of them they've alluded to. Wow, <laughs> she's Mad okay. Style coming in hot. Mad Style, <laughs> thank you, Mad oh, Style, wow. for the subs. Thank you so oh, much for that. For way to kick us off. And Dusty, thank you for that follow too. Thanks you for guys, the follow. Share some love with Mad Style because he gave out eleven subs. That means almost everybody in the room got one. <laughs> Not everybody, <laughs> but a lot of you got one. So y'all send some love back to Mad Style for hooking y'all up, hooking y'all up. Um, yeah, we've been talking about these different careers and transport, particularly civilian transport. Y'all, I should have put that in the title, but the picture tells it all. Obviously, we're not transporting tanks and stuff like that. We're talking about transportation in the verse. And so I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to warn you now. You know, I love putting together videos and graphics and illustrations. Today, we going back to school, university, get ready to take some notes because mm -hmm. this ain't going to be no whiteboard. There's a whole lot we of text. <laughs> We're going to do a lot of reading. We're going to do a <laughs> right. lot of reading today. This is going to be the most yep. read show in the history of this show because we have a lot of information. Galki, thank you. Thank you for seven months. Thank you for that resub. We appreciate that too. Um, oh, man. Thanks for the subscription. There's a lot of reading that we're going to be doing today. I'm just getting y'all ready. So... The reason why we're doing it is because for those of you who remember when CIG put out their documentation early in the game, for example, let's use Death of a Spaceman. Chris wrote a very detailed outline of what Death of the Spaceman would be like. And over the years, people kept talking about Death of the Spaceman, Death of the Spaceman, Death of the Spaceman. And then as it got later, like within the last couple of years, people were like, well, you know, that was written seven, eight years ago. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be, they probably changed it. It won't be the same thing. You really mm -hmm. can't trust it. Well, those of you who read the original document know that when they finally did produce this in the game, it's probably like, what guys, what do you think? 85% there? Maybe 90%? I would say, yes. The bulk yeah. of it. I think the cloning thing was the only thing that they changed in it that was big. Uh, coming up with you leaving your signature and deterioration, but the bulk of it is there. So we're mm -hmm. going to treat this topic from the design to, uh, the design document on transportation the same way. We know there may be some things that change, but we also know CIG so far has tried to be as close to those design documents, even if they existed five, six, seven years ago. Now this one is not written by Chris Roberts. This one is written by our good friend Tony Z. It felt nice to say good friend Tony Z because he's not our good friend, but I thought we'd say it anyway. Um, it was pretty, it feels was it, Did it sound natural? Okay. Uh, but mm -hmm. everybody who's into the game, at least most of us know who Tony Zurovic is. And so Tony wrote this and um, we're going to go through it. So bear with us because there's a lot of reading, a lot of reading. Okay. No, Pops, the Zeus is not a transport ship. Not in the sense of like what, well, it is actually. It's like a, yeah. it's kind of a, 
like the first what was it the first uh uh not shuttle but I got you know, I got to go back and look up the history of yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. Because yeah. it was like a shuttle thing, but I don't remember if it was a transport ship. It was a commercial aircraft. It was, it was commercial. commercial right. It was like a uh, like a shuttle, but it was I I can't remember Pops. A, why are you throwing it, it in like there now? Now you mess me up. Yeah, you messing me up now, Pops. I got to <laughs> now you going to make me go look it up. We'll see if we can find out for you, Pops. I there, found there, it on you the, got the design uh, Star documents? Citizen tools. Yeah, Thank I got you. it on Star Citizen Tools. Right. And it really does look like the space shuttle yeah. in, in many, many ways. Yeah. Um, Captain and it Jones was says the, it's the Avengers first Daddy. First commercially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. First but commercial. It was the first commercially available spaceship. Spaceship. That you could get. Okay, yes. cool. All right. Okay, so we're going to jump into this uh, intro on this particular topic. Uh, the opening here, I'm going to read this to you because this is how it starts out. And we're going to put the link in for that. If one of you guys, one of the mods could drop that in for everybody and you guys can follow along with us because I'm telling you, there's a lot of reading here, okay? Uh, this opens up with Sik Etur Ad Astra, uh, which means to the stars or to the heavens. And, and so we're going to pick that up. And this is by Tony Z. At the time, he's titled as Director of the Persistent Universe. Uh, interesting little model he puts here at the opening. He says, most people focus on where they want to be. We're the ones that obsess about getting you there. I know DK likes that idea because he likes mm -hmm. being a pilot and getting folks where they gotta go, okay? Uh, Star Citizen civilian passenger transport is one of the more unique occupational roles that a player can assume. As with mining, discovery, repair, rescue, and scientific research, the focus is not on combat. Instead, Passenger transport is about competing with other players and characters in much more subtle and diverse ways for the right to provide a critical and necessary support service for the proper operation of the entire galactic ecosystem. Whereas other endeavors demand a player's attention at key points throughout a mission with passenger transport, the journey is the mission. Okay, so the journey is the mission. Um, and we, again, we're talking about civilian transport, folks. We're not talking about using the Liberator. We're not talking about being on the, what's the thing, the, the Kraken. Uh, we're mm -hmm. talking about moving people around within the verse. Um, uh, did, do either of you guys ever, did you, either of you guys ever play a game where that was a mechanic, like moving people around? And which DK yeah. you're shaking your head already? Which one, which, oh, yeah. which game did you play that was in that category? Okay. First was Elite Dangerous, okay. and Elite Dangerous, there are passenger missions mm -hmm. where you actually have to take uh, take people, and you have to, uh, you know, you might have some first-class passengers, you might have some economy ones, that, and you have to treat them right. You mm -hmm. know, if you put them in, in the, you know, first-class customers in the economy section, they ain't going to like you very much. <laughs> you know, but if you put economy people into your first class, hey, they're going to love for the subscription. You. Thanks for the subscriptions mm -hmm. there, Dark the Side. The, the yeah, face. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yes, and then, uh, and then of course, there's other games such as uh, Flight Simulator. I'll use analogies to Flight Simulator yeah. and my actual experience working in the airlines throughout the show. Mm -hmm. um, but there are add-ons where you can at, as a passenger airline and you can have to treat your passengers right. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is what it's all about. Okay. It's a uh, it is a very deep career. And I'll leave this for a nugget for all of you. PvP doesn't mean just combat. And mm -hmm. this is what he was just saying. PvP can also be economic. Mm -hmm. And this is where PvP comes in in an economy side. Yeah. So good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Calvary, what about you? Any games where you had to do a passenger or passenger flight or anything like that? Yeah, um, so I remember this game, it was a taxi game actually, and you had to stop by at certain um, at certain points in the city, and you had to wait until the taxi or the person came into the game, uh, into the taxi, and you had to drop them off at, at, at from point A to point B. It was a very simple game, it was it was when I was you know much much younger, but that was my first experience. I, I can't even remember the name of the game. <laughs> That's how long. Mm, <laughs> well. But yeah, it was a very simple process. But that was my first experience with the whole transportation kind of you know career kind of thing in a video game. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm, that was more so driven by time. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna fall back on my old standby Star Wars <laughs> Galaxies, uh, and mm. they they eventually <laughs> implemented. Uh, Rice, thank you for that resub. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Awesome sauce. Hey, thanks for the eight months. Um, Yeah, in Star Wars Galaxies, when you wanted to get from planet to planet, if you want to go from Tatooine to Dothamir or whatever, 
there was a shuttle uh, station, a transport station that you went to. And it was what was really cool about it was you could actually see this thing when it was flying in from outer space coming into, mm. you know, uh, whatever city you were in, if it was Naboo or whatever. Uh, and uh, you'd go there and the thing would land and you'd literally walk out of the spaceport, go get on this thing. And then you would arrive at your other location. Now there wasn't any like walking around the ship and having drinks or anything like that, but right. it was kind of cool that that was the way that you would load in into the next destination that you had to go to. Uh, and it was a pretty cool animation. It, there was a ship that kind of looked like the Millennium Falcon, but bigger, like a bigger transport version of it. Mm -hmm. That was really, mm -hmm. really neat. Uh, and I used to always say, man, it would be so cool to be able to do that in real time. Rice, I see you out there. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Solari, I see you too. Don't get me started. Okay. So yeah, those they, so transportation is is not something that's unusual in some games for civilians. Um, but CIG is trying to take this to another level, which you all will find out today from our reading. So speaking of our reading, let's go ahead and start out with the first category that we have, which is starting a career, starting a career. Envoy, thank you for that. Okay, yourself, seven months. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. We're going to throw this over to Cal Roddy. He's going to kick us off. I'm telling you, I'll get y'all notes, get that link. Cause you really may want to follow us. Cause you're going to see some stuff. Yeah. And you say, I didn't know that. I didn't know they put this in the game. So get ready. All right, Cal Roddy, it's on you now. Starting a career. All right, starting a career. So passenger transport is a heavily regulated activity. And the first step in an aspiring transporter's career is to obtain a license at the government offices of the various landing zones from which you wish to pick up or deliver passengers. If your criminal record is clear and you have no prior exper experience in the field, this is a quick and painless process. A recurring fee for the license is required with the amount dependent upon how much passenger traffic levels through that landing zone. Oh, sorry. Uh, a recurring fee for the license is required with the amount dependent upon how much tra passenger traffic levels through that landing zone. I think I'm reading, I'm reading It's like right. passing travels through, yeah, travels through. <laughs> okay. That's okay, you said levels, okay. go ahead. All right, uh, so larger transports with fuel. Oh, thank you for the subscription, citizens are. Thank you. So. Larger transports with fuel-efficient engine upgrades and finely honed crew focus on those potential traffic hubs, driving the, driving the ticket prices down to the point that a player will need considerable experience and an advanced, and an advanced ship in order to profitably complete, compete. Smaller and first-time operators tend to therefore stick to those landing zones that don't have as much passenger traffic. Those locales will take a bit longer to sell out a flight. There will be a little demand for the long distance flights that are often the most profitable. And most of the travelers will only be interested in basic low cost fares rather than cutting edge comfort. However, there will also be considerably less competition and thus better profit margins for less experienced operators utilizing less efficient ships hey, let's stop right there because we've got more to go we want to say thank you to io spartan for those five oh, gifts man. Thank, thank you, you so, much, so much so much and uh Ari, yeah. as Azrael, thank you for that follow as well thank you guys we got a hype train going mm -hmm. so you guys oh, have yeah. made us hit our mark we were just 13 short of uh hitting 100 subs for this month and you guys have already put us there so thank you guys so much Boom. we're at 105 rocks. so thank you <laughs> yeah. you guys are amazing so thank let's talk you. about anything here you guys want to highlight that happened here oh my god Bryce, thank you. <laughs> Bryce, you the best. thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Rice. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for that. You guys give some love to these folks that are giving out these gift subs. There's some good folks there. Thank you. Mr. Just Pink, thank heart. you for that follow as well. Um, anything stand out here? Well, you know, let, me, let me bring up some things here. I think that a lot of people have kind of thought that they're just going to get in their ship, get a mission that's going to come mm -hmm. down on their Moby Glass, and they're going to go out and go pick somebody up, right? Um, yep. Thrakazogs, thank you for that sub to Black Intellect. Be Black thank Intellects you. out there, great. Um, they're saying that, man, you gotta get a license and oh. there's <laughs> fees and all mm -hmm. this stuff you gotta do. Uh, what do you guys think about this? This is getting kind of deep already, right? Definitely. I definitely. Spartan. Oh my oh, God. Spartan. Thank you so much. We are on a hike. Oh, you guys. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We very get it. Much. Thank you. We get it. We get it. Thank you. You love us. Thank you. Thank we you. love you too. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Um, any thoughts on that about this whole process that they talked about? Because they have talked about 
the difference between running the bigger mm -hmm. commercial flights, uh, smaller yep. flights, uh, the fact that most passengers are going to want to be doing, like most folks, right? Coach economy, right? Yep. Not everybody's mm -hmm. going to be doing first class. Who's got some thoughts on that? Oh, I could go all on it. Why don't you go first, Scout Roddy? <laughs> all right, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. I'll leave it over to you. All right, so a few things, you know, kind of stood out to me. Oh, my God. Captain Captain Jones. Thank you, Captain Jones. Okay, Thank guys, so I much. think everybody in chat now probably we has a sub at this point. Thank you, Captain Jones. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, y'all give Captain Jones some love if you got one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Cal Roddy. <laughs> But yeah, so a few things stood out to me, and it kind of made me wonder how they're, you know, aiming to to measure mm -hmm. the satisfaction of customers when it comes to to you know transport. Because yes, you have something like time, mm -hmm. but you have other features that you know that that can measure that kind of satisfaction for mission reputation. Mm -hmm. For example, um, when it comes to the type of transport, of course, but also when it comes to the flight experience. Now mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself, okay, how are they going to measure flight experience? Well, we have Gs, right? You can measure the flight experience in terms of how much Gs a passenger may mm -hmm. experience and convert that mm -hmm. to satisfaction. If you're flying crazy and you're dodging and you're stopping quickly, then that passenger is going to experience mm -hmm. a lot of Gs. Mm -hmm. So. Who knows, maybe, um, you know, when when that ties in with the license, that is something that, you know, really set out as well. And hopefully that will have some kind of connection to the reputations, mm -hmm. you know, because when you want to start something off, then maybe you really need to have a license or a particular tier of license mm -hmm. to be able to Get started. deliver. Yeah. And yeah. So, from so, so you're saying, civilian. So you're saying mm -hmm. there may be a situation where you can't even, I hate to say this, DK, because me and I, you and I both own these ships. You're saying we may not be able to just start out flying a Genesis Starliner. We may have to start with something smaller mm -hmm. and exactly. license up, right? Before exactly. we can even take it out, at least within UEE space. Yeah. At least within yeah. UEE space, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. And okay, Cairo, we, you, can, go ahead. you can use your 890 jump if you want. Just risk it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you risk it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. DK, what you got? Yeah. So with you know when it comes to licensing, there's a thing called type rating in the airline mm -hmm. and uh, in, in, in piloting, mm -hmm. um, and you have to be rated towards uh, you know being able to fly a certain type of aircraft. Right. And if you're not rated for that aircraft, you can't fly it. Mm -hmm. And that licensing is required for you to bring that aircraft into certain airports. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, you might not be type rated on an aircraft. You can't take it into say Terra mm -hmm. and drop it down at the landing zone there and pick up passengers. Mm -hmm. You might only be able to go to a moon and be able to go to an outpost out there and mm -hmm. pick up passengers um yep. like they were saying here you might have to go to different locales that have lower uh you know lower passenger counts mm -hmm. that's regional flights yep. you know uh, most yeah. airline pilots start out flying regional, regional. before mm -hmm. they move up to those big jets mm -hmm. they don't start there so you gotta you have to work your way up and yeah. some of that comes down to the licensing and your training and things like that and yeah you gotta pay for it that's uh good. you know unless you're working for somebody that's gonna pay for it for you right uh you actually have to pay for it and it is not cheap yeah. um so yeah. i can see in this case tony c is talking about you know having to have the proper licenses to go to these proper landing zones and you know and it's really not so much of oh i'm going to get the first class passengers honestly you're going to make the most money off the economy passengers because you can fill the plane mm -hmm. with people mm -hmm. as opposed to just a few people that are paying a lot more money yeah. um so those big flights those are those are going to cost you know they're going to be lucrative they're mm -hmm. going to cost money for you to get the licensing in order to get there um and it's going to be a very stiff competition um like i said that's another aspect of pvp right there mm -hmm. uh competing against others to get those prime slots mm -hmm. with the prime passengers um mm -hmm. and uh, i like the fact that he's talking about you know it might take longer to sell out a flight mm -hmm. for some of these smaller areas mm -hmm. you want to have a sold flight you know, if you don't have a sold flight, you better have a lot of cargo on board. Yeah, or, or you, you got to eat it, right? You got to eat or it. Or you got to eat it. You got to yep. eat the cost. Mm -hmm. You got to eat the cost. Yeah. You was yeah. talking about efficiency and, and engine upgrades and things like that. Yeah. You don't have proper engines. It's going to cost you a lot more in fuel. Yeah. Um, you know, or it might take longer to get to your destination. There's mm -hmm. a lot of factors that go into this career. Yeah. And, and uh to think about what i like about this is that the, there, this whole chapter here that cal Roddy's reading is just talking about starting the career we hadn't even gotten mm -hmm. to the other career yeah. Stuff yeah, you gotta do. this is just yeah. if you want to get started in doing mm -hmm. it and i like what you mentioned about ratings because you're absolutely right you can go from single engine to twin engine to multi-jet you know i mean those are progressions 
And true mm -hmm. enough, it would make sense in the game if they say when you first get started, it also kind of gives you the zero to hero thing too. You know what yep. I mean? So that you just can't come in and start making money in UEE space just because you have the big ship, right? Yep. And mm -hmm. I like what you said, Kelrati, mm -hmm. maybe they will tie in things like physics and other things that determine, you know, whether or not you quote unquote, what we would call qualify, right? Did you yep. qualify to even Absolutely. be able to have that license? Okay. Listen, we got a lot of reading gangs. So we're going to jump through. Go ahead, Kelrati. Let's pick up that next paragraph we got there. Okay, so here we go. Passenger transport requires a specialized type of ship such as the Starliner, which is being offered today in a concept sale. That was early. back then, yeah. No, no, yeah, that was back then. <laughs> <laughs> there are four classes of comfort, coach, business class, first class, and luxury class, All right? But many ships support only one or two of these. Fuel capacity, consumable storage, capacity and engine efficiency are the primary determinants as to whether a given ship is classified as short or long range. Mm -hmm. The Starliner is a, is a top of the line, a long range luxury class transport ship equipped with a prodigious uh, mm -hmm. seating capacity, fuel efficient engines and advanced quantum stabilizer to minimize occurrences of vibration induced nausea private sleeping cabins, and much more to remove all of the discomfort from an extended voyage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So real quick, we're just touching on this real quick because we got a lot of reading, but just understand here that they talk about there's different classes. Uh, you, it, it did mention the concept sale. That's how far back this goes because this oh, document yeah. came out when the mm -hmm. Starliner came out and they highlighted. So some of the other transport ships weren't even in the game yet, but oh. they do classify this ship is top of the line. That's the thing yeah. that we want folks to know that this was considered the top of the line at the time. Uh, go ahead, Cal Roddy, let's read a little bit more and then we'll talk about it some more. All right, hang in there, guys, more reading. <laughs> <laughs> Once a compatible ship and a license to operate have been obtained, a player need only park on a public landing pad and initiate a connection to the local flight schedule computer in order to get a sense of the passenger traffic at that location. Mm. Desired destinations are shown in order of popularity with the number of passengers that have traveled to that locale over the last day and the average prices they paid for each ticket class available as a means of reference. Okay, now this part I'm digging a lot because mm -hmm. as you guys mm -hmm. know, uh, when you've gone into the game, you've gone to the spaceport, you actually see like the flight tables up on the walls, yep. right? Uh, and, and mm -hmm. right now they're just kind of generic, but as we always say, CIG puts things in the game it's because they want to have some purpose to yep. it, right? It's a placeholder. Yeah, exactly. So if, whether you're coming as a passenger and you're looking for where flights are and what times they're leaving, uh, also there's going to be a table for pilots to look at when they log in, they're going to see what mm -hmm. are the most popular destinations? Where are people flying to the most? Uh, how many people are waiting? This is one of the reasons why NPCs and AI are also important. This goes yes, back to the whole time. thing with the bartender and the baristas, guys. This is another thing that they will be doing. Most of the people that you're going to be transporting will be NPCs. You'll get some players too, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you're going to get for these flights, like on the Sega, I will say the Sega Genesis, isn't that funny? <laughs> the Genesis Starliner, um, you're going to be picking up NPCs that are waiting there for a flight or you find out there's demand there. When we go to the, um, what's the place called where we do our trading? Um, TDD? The CD, yeah, the yep. TDD. You guys mm -hmm. notice that they've got all of those tickers up there running and stuff. Yes. That's going to be real yeah. time for commodities and resources. You're going to have the same type of thing happening in the spaceports, which is why they're going to be really buzzing up for activity. Not just for those of us who really right. go get in our private ship, but all this activity going around public travel as well. Uh, DK, mm -hmm. anything on that? And I'll take Cal Roddy on it and then we'll read some more. Yeah, the uh, the recent uh, um, Star Citizen Live was going on about AI. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of what you were hearing in that particular episode deals a lot with what is going to be happening with ships like the Starliner and in passenger transport mm -hmm. of being able to take care of your particular passengers. In this case, uh, you know, they're talking about um, having the proper uh, classes in your ship and, uh, you know, seating efficiency and things like that, but also timing. And we're getting into that a little bit more because that's further down. Mm -hmm. um, but um, here, in this case, me being able to get the proper routes and getting the best route to fly and make the most money is my competition against, say, another player. 
I might get the best route. You might have to take the route that's less below that one. But mm. I might get, you know, I'm going to be fighting you for the uh, for the best route, say from I don't know Art Corp to Terra or something like mm. that. And um, and if I get that, I know I'm going to make the best money. But I also have to make sure, and we'll get to this too. Reputation. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure that I'm able to uphold the proper risk in order for me to keep that route. Otherwise, you might be able to take it from me, and I might have to fight you in order to get that route back. There's a you know and. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I could go on and on. I don't want to keep talking. Okay, sure. gotcha. <laughs> I have so much to say about this. <laughs> okay, okay. Calrady, you got anything? Yeah. So you know, talking about this whole career, um, you know, we've been mainly fake, um, focusing uh, on the player-driven side of it, where we are actually doing the transport. But for example, let's you know try and. This is a bit of theory crafting, but it, it may be something that is um, that could be that could happen. Let's say persistent entity streaming comes online, and we get global persistence, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say, well, um, persistent locations of our us our players, similar to any other MMORPG or MMO out there, you know, comes in, and when we exit the game, we don't go back to the station. So let's say, for example, our ship something happens to our ship, and we're stranded somewhere. Well, we'll have to fire off a beacon to have someone come and pick us up via some kind of, you know, um, transporting um, method or, or route or something like that. So, you know, that whole thing could be a, a, could be NPC driven or player driven. Yeah. So mm. that, you know, that could also tie in with what kind of ship or what kind of class of ship that we, we would prefer, depending on our on reputation mm -hmm. that we'll be talking mm -hmm. about soon or place or location that we are, um, that we're located in. So all this, all those things can also tie in. So, so it just got me thinking about that, that kind of possibility as well. Yeah. Good. And I want to throw in there too, Griff, because you had mentioned NPCs and that you know, NPCs are going to be a lot of food and transport. NPCs are going to be the butter of this business mm -hmm. um, because you're not going to be relying on players to right. make the money. Right. You know, you you mm -hmm. might transport players from time to time, mm -hmm. but NPC is going to be where you're going to be making your most, uh, the most of your income and what, who you're to be dealing with for the most part, which is why, you know, watching these AI um, discussions on Star Citizen Live is so important. That's why you had mentioned the bartender. The bartender is leading up to the flight attendant. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, those mm -hmm. are the kinds of, you know, kinds of NPCs we're going to have to deal with, you know, the, right. the, the NPC punching the, uh, the, the vending machine because it's not working. Mm -hmm. You know, it might be a, a passenger punching a flight attendant because they didn't get the right okay. drink. Hopefully that's not the case, but, you know, that could be, you know, those are types of things that could happen, um, yeah. you know. So we're reliant on NPC and AI technology in order for this particular career to actually exist it's good yeah it's good okay calrati one more paragraph you got all right here we go players may select a destination for their flight set the price for each ticket class that they offer and specify a departure and estimated arrival time the flight can then be published at which point travelers can see the flight and begin to purchase tickets depending upon the amount of passenger traffic seeking to travel to that location the prices that you set your departure time and flight duration, the number of competing flights, mm. and your reputation. Travelers may begin to exit customs and board your ship in a tick in a trickle or a flood. Mm. The ship's pilot receives real-time feedback as to how many tickets have been sold out of the available inventory and may change the price of unsold tickets at any time. The mm. pilot may terminate the ticket offering prematurely but may not modify the departure or arrival times without canceling the flight entirely, which would not be well received by those passengers <laughs> that had already purchased the ticket. Wow. No additional tickets will be sold beyond the scheduled departure time. The real work begins once the pilot has made the decision to depart and continues nonstop until the passengers have been, have been deposited at the desired yeah, deposited at their desired destination. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that they get they're, that they're going to give the player, the pilot, that's what they meant by player. They're going to give you yeah. the ability to set the ticket price, uh, the class, what you know, which class cost. Uh, you could say what time you want to depart. Here's the kicker: 
the estimated time of arrival, you know, getting that right, mm -hmm. you know, how, what, what time yeah. am I going to get there? Because mm -hmm. you are going to be rated on whether or not you can deliver, whether or not you're yep. on time, right? Yeah. Um, on time performance, as we called it. Yeah. Yeah. Now this thing goes up on the screen. The NPCs are going to respond to it. It'll be really kind of cool to see, you know, how, tweaking those numbers the right way, right? So yeah. that, you know, whether yeah. or not they get up out of their seats or whether they're still sitting there like, uh-uh, I'm taking some too high. I'm really curious to see. Uh, Cal Roddy, what do you think on this piece? Yeah, exactly, because it's easy to to simply set your destination and, and have some kind of estimation, right, um, for your for your arrival time. Mm -hmm. But when you factor in things like, okay, some kind of quantum interdiction, if you aren't traveling with escorts, because we know that there are going to be pilots that aren't going to be traveling with escorts, mm -hmm. and you have all these interruptions, all these things occurring, sometimes who knows, maybe some kind of dynamic event may occur and shut some kind of jump gate down, and you have to right. take a whole detour that you didn't account for. Mm -hmm. So all these things that you, you know you'll have to account for. And, you know, when they actually talked about that whole setting prices and setting all these parameters, it kind of took me back to, you know, the ship ship refueling where, mm -hmm. you know, the owner of the software can actually do things like that before offering that service to that player who wants to be refueled. So they're kind of, you know, starting that um, with the whole, you know, owner of the ship can set these parameters before offering the service. Mm -hmm. So interesting. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. DK, let me ask you a question. Um, yes. You and I have worked in aviation. Uh, I, we both do flight sim. There are ways to calculate when you're yes. going to arrive somewhere. Do you think yeah. CIG may build something like that into something like the star map or something so that pilots can literally set their flight plan? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can say if I'm jumping to Vega, I can say that I know that I'll arrive there within 2.8 hours, whatever. Is that something mm -hmm. that CIG could put into maybe the star map or a tool like that? Oh. Absolutely, they could put that in there, mm -hmm. but it's also up to you to find to actually run the flight and see exactly how long it's going to take you to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, they might put in an estimation of it's going to take you two hours to get to point, you know, mm -hmm. you know some certain location through however many start, you know, uh, um, jump points. But if you're a good person, if you're a good pilot and you know your airline very well or, or space line very well, then you might be able to find shortcuts and, and through different areas or be able to modify your route to get some either someplace faster or you've run that flight yourself and practiced it just to know exactly how much time you believe or estimate is going to take you. Mm -hmm. So if I'm saying I'm going to take a flight from, I don't know, Levski, you know, and take them over to... Um, I don't know, Odin. Mm -hmm. just, I'm just using examples here. I'm going to run that flight without any passengers to see how long it might take me. Mm -hmm. And okay. then I'm going to run the flight back. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have an estimated time. But that also adds into that competition. Somebody else might be able to do it faster, depending on their engines mm -hmm. that are on their ship, you yeah. know, and then and, and things like that. Yeah. And then ticket prices, you know, as far as ticket prices is a thing, you know, you, you got to compete again. This is a co economy competition yeah. um, where, you know, setting a price too low might not get you the best passengers. Spirit yeah. Airlines. Hello. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. The riff you know, but setting, yeah. Riff mm -hmm. but setting your prices too high mm -hmm. might not fill your, might not fill your ship. Yeah. Um, so you got to play right? the game. Mm -hmm. There's a big sweet spot in there mm -hmm. and don't even get me into talking about cancellations. Cause mm -hmm. I used to work, I worked, uh, I, when I was working for Midwest airlines in Los Angeles, um, you tell canceled flights. Mm -mm. Yeah, not fun. Because yeah. when you got to make that announcement yeah. and tell people their flights are canceled, I you better believe mm. it's coming at you. And you know, and it's, it's coming at you. Big there will time. definitely be impact on your reputation, right? You cancel a big flight, time. you overpriced by eighty or big something. Time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some trouble there. I want to yeah. go. I oh. want to go back to some some things that are mentioned because people are mentioning about escorts in here. Yeah, I was going to say something I, about that. I, I want, I'm, I'm going to put this on the floor for us to talk about it later. And the question is, mm -hmm. what will be the demand for escorts? Because, you know, mm -hmm. everybody talks about when you travel in the verse, oh, escort, 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 escort. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily agree that there always has to be escorts. Now, don't get me nope. wrong. I know there's a risk factor. But I played EE for seven years. There were times I had escorts, and there were times when I didn't. And I arrived a lot of places without escorts. Mm -hmm. But I think there's some techniques to getting around in a verse that you can do that will minimize your exposure to piracy and things like that. Right. If you're in traffic lanes and stuff, hecky yeah, I get it. 
Uh, but we'll talk about that later. But I do want to put that in you guys' yeah. minds. Don't let me forget to talk about escorts later, okay? Uh, DK, I think we're on yours now with reputation. Let's uh, go ahead and hop okay. into that. To transport another character is to have them place your, their trust in you. And as such, your most important business asset is your reputation. Allow that to be sullied, and it will be a long, hard road to regain the community's trust in business. Reputation directly impacts two things whether your license to operate is temporarily revoked or not, and how much of a discount you must suffer or premium you may enjoy when competing against others and offering an otherwise identical level of service. Mm. Reputation is measured via how well travelers are being safely delivered to their destination and the overall level of satisfaction of those players and NPCs with the flight experience. While the former is very straightforward, the latter involves the evaluation of many different components. Let's stop there for a er second. Let's stop there. Okay. Um, yeah, reputation. It, let me go to mm. Cal Roddy first and come back to uh, DK on that one. Oh, reputation. Uh, you know, the more we read about reputation, the more I think it's definitely going to be one of the driving factors to making many of these things viable mm -hmm. and also leveling the playing field. When I say leveling the playing field, the playing field in terms of, you know, how well you can advance, not not because like we were um, saying or talking about earlier, not because of how many ships you have, but, you know, your dedication and your commitment to actually doing these kinds of missions and services in a proper way. So, you know, um, especially when, when it comes to the consequences, if you aren't doing, you know, or delivering the service in, in, mm -hmm. a, in, a, in a reputable way, mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be very, very interesting um, you know, for the new players, especially, as well as the old players who think, okay, they may underestimate how difficult or easy it may be to conduct a particular, um, a particular travel. Because one e example is, well, like we said, um, taking a particular route. Let's say that route requires us to go through a particular atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Well, I was doing, um, you know, a combat mission yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I was really underestimating these NPCs in Atmo because I'm more so accustomed to fighting them in vacuum. And let me tell you, my Daria was handed to me 10 times over. <laughs> I literally had to exit. <laughs> I thought, yeah, okay, I'm going to Cutlass. I'm going up against a Cutlass and, and a Gladys and, and an M50. Psh, how, how, how hard can that, can that be? I mm. almost died. Mm. So imagine, you know, you choosing to take a particular route. And, you know, you're thinking, okay, um, you're making these kinds of choices and you think that, okay, when you do these choices or you take these kinds of routes, you'll be able to, you know, um, uphold your reputation after you complete it successfully. But mm -hmm. if things go south, then that can really be detrimental for your reputation. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Yeah. DK, what about you? Uh, they, you opened up talking about this whole thing of um, reputation impacts two things, whether your license to operate is temporarily revoked or not and how mm -hmm. much of a discount you may have to suffer or premium that you can offer. You know, if you're a really great pilot and you got a great reputation, you can ask for the higher prices. If you slam your ship down on the deck all the time and make people's heads hit the seat in front of them, you may have to yep. <laughs> do discounted <laughs> tickets yep. or something, right? <laughs> if anybody is here from uh, from Europe, or specifically the UK, you know about Ryanair, and they have a reputation for slamming planes down on the ground. Yep. Not to mention that Southwest Airlines in the United States has Yo, a reputation ooh, for speeding, cowboys. speeding on the taxiways. Yes, <laughs> so, cowboys. So there's, you know, those kinds of things do come up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I and I, I will always come back to the airline industry because that's what I know best. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your reputation makes or breaks you. Yeah. And if you start to develop a bad reputation, you start losing, you know, you start losing ser uh, services, mm -hmm. uh, whether it is routes, you know, proficient routes, mm -hmm. uh, you might lose some of those good routes mm -hmm. because you got a bad reputation and nobody wants to fly you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might lose customers. Some of those good customers might uh, say, uh, yeah, goodbye. You know, because they don't go fly somebody else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because of that reputation is a lot better. Once you start to lose your reputation, you might have to shut down. You might have to start all back mm. over. And, mm. you know, in those cases, you might even have to change your name. Mm. You know, how many past, you know, how many flights out there have changed their name 
mm. from one airline to another because their reputation Station. was so bad mm. that they ended up having to, you know, change ch change the name of their company yeah. just just to survive or merge with a different company mm. just to keep themselves afloat. It's just the way that things are, and reputation is the make or break in this game mm -hmm. and in this industry. It is the most important aspect of of being successful and how you're going to work. There is just so you guys know there's a org i'm not sure if they're still in existence now they were around for quite a while called ig air mm -hmm. ig air was made up of real life airline pilots in this game um and they went all out if you ever get to go i think their website is still up or they're still up on the rsi site they have a site that is ridiculous i mean their role playing level is on some astronomical level but they're very very serious about it and, I, and i'm thinking about yeah. the fact that you may have that independent operator and then you've mm -hmm. got these orgs that are dedicated toward I'll let you flying. know. I you am know part I mean? of one of those orgs. Okay. Um, there is a uh, a YouTube um, uh, and, and Twitch content creator. His name mm -hmm. is uh, John Fly. Mm -hmm. He's big in uh, flight simulation. Mm -hmm. And we have a organization called Snack Air. Mm -hmm. And it is specifically geared for passenger transport. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are a lot of former airline pilots there, mm -hmm. a lot of very uh, diehard flight sims in there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the goal in Star Citizen that's for that organization. For. Yeah, that's that's, the, that's the goal. Okay, yep. okay. Let's hit the last paragraph there, DK, in reputation. Okay. Every passenger keeps track of their flight experience in a number of different ways and their ticket class directly impacts how forgiving they are in their evaluation. While the higher fares that can be charged for first class may seem very appealing, adequately dealing with the increased difficulty of satisfying a more demanding clientele will require much more than simply the one-time purchase of a ship offering the desired seating comfort and amenities. Travelers that purchase the higher tier seating classes expect superior service, higher quality food and drink, a greater selection of entertainment offerings, prompt medical treatment, and better access to shipboard facilities. How well these expectations are met will ultimately determine how a player's reputation in the passenger transportation field evolves over time. Okay, thank you. Now we're gonna mm -hmm. break down some of this stuff that DK just read because these next categories are all gonna be in relation to the things that he just read about how you're gonna keep mm -hmm. your passengers happy. It's not gonna be just enough to buy a ticket, it's not just enough to leave on time and arrive on time, but as we mentioned at the beginning of this, it's the journey. And there are things that are going to be expected of you and your, if you have one, crew to keep people happy during these flights. Okay. So I love that picture, by the way, guys, on the screen. DK, I'm just like digging that. Okay. You just uh, roll, uh, up, roll up in your car, Tara, <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm digging that. Okay. Let's uh let's go ahead and jump into this very first one here. This is called ISIS. I, I, I called it ISIS earlier and Cal Roddy almost freaked out. Um, but it's not the ISIS that we're thinking about. Okay. Um, it's this. And, and again, we've got the link in here. You guys go to the website, the, the document design doc for this if you want to learn more about it. I had to chop the picture up because it's so big. I couldn't put the whole thing on, but I want to read to you what ISIS is. Okay. ISIS is an acronym for information, communication, and entertainment system. It is the computer centerpiece of a passenger flight. It allows them to do things like order food and drinks and engage in various forms of entertainment. Every seat on a passenger transport flight is equipped with a holographic projector in the ceiling above and to the front that is tied to an ISIS blade in the hardware room at the back of every ship. These devices will, will on occasion fail. And in such cases, it is of paramount importance to quickly resolve the problem, given how prominently it factors into a passenger's enjoyment of a flight. So this is an item that's okay. like, you know, if you guys on a flight right now, sometimes you have a TV monitor in front of you, whatever. They've got something similar. It's basically an entertainment system that keeps the passenger busy while you're flying. If this sucker breaks down, <laughs> oh. you need to fix it. That's all that past, that's all that past paragraph said. Oh, boy. If this thing breaks down, you need to fix it. Because these people are going to be mad that they got to stare at a seat in front of them of something that doesn't work. And it's holographic too, which is cool. ISIS blades may fail for a variety of reasons. And each requires specific, a specific procedure to resolve it. 
burnout units are simply ejected and replaced with another, assuming that the player had the foresight to restock their ship prior to the departure. Excessive radio interference may prevent a solid communication data link from being established, which can in turn be addressed via a player quickly matching a set of binary filters to a <laughs> hexadecimal status code before the interfering before the interfering frequency and offsetting status code change. Recalibration of a misaligned audio processor can be accomplished via pressing a sequence of eight buttons associated with musical notes to match a test melody whose length is dedicated by dictated by the extent of the failure. Carefully soldering a loose connection while uh, ensuring that the main circuit board isn't damaged in the process can remedy contact failures. Okay, we're not going to even go down all that. There's go down the okay. <laughs> if they pull all that off, it's going to be amazing, right? But what yeah, we yeah. do know is that they are going to come up with some type of quote unquote. They don't like calling them mini games because I get it, but they are going to come up with some type of procedure of something that you have to do. The more severe, uh -huh. the more severe the problem. The more involved what it is you will have to do. Uh, if yep. it's not so severe, it may only be a couple things. Um, you know, DK Calrati, we've talked about this a little bit in the past. A lot of times when people have bought ships, they're concerned about cargo, right? Mm -hmm. And right. for the most part, that's been in relation to trade. It's been in relation to because I want to go sell stuff, right? But we've also talked about the fact that cargo isn't always about selling things or buying mm -hmm. things. It is also about having to stock your ship up. And now that we're coming into this whole physicalized cargo, cargo refactor, you're going to have to leave space. He just mentioned here, or the writer, uh, Tony, said, if you didn't buy three or four of those units, backup units, and put them on your ship, because you didn't have the foresight to do it, that's cargo mm -hmm. space being taken up, right? Uh, yep. Earlier, we read about the quality of foods. First class people get a better food. In other words, you can't give the person in first class that freaking protein bar or torpedo burrito. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yep. Right. Yep. You know, in oh, the back. Water. Yeah, water. yeah, water. Right. In the back, you can pass out. What, what do they give out on the planes? The pretzels or something, right? You can give Sometimes, out little bags. Yeah. Pretzels, you know? peanuts, whatever. <laughs> hey, you got to stock all this stuff up yep. on your ship. Yeah. You got to buy all this stuff ahead of time. We're seeing this already as a foreshadowing. Starfarer. You gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta put fuel in that bad fella. You know how much it costs yep. to refuel the star fare with Quantum? Oh boy, I can and imagine how you, a lot. We're talking 500, mm -hmm. 700, 800,000, almost a million oh, to yeah. fill that sucker up. You gotta have some upfront cash to stock that bad fella. So yeah. when you talk about doing these ships, and I'll go to you first, DK, with this whole thing with ISIS, you know, entertainment, providing, you know, stocking mm -hmm. up supplies, give us some thought on that. Well, first on the ISIS part, uh, in, in current times, it would be called an IFE or mm -hmm. in-flight entertainment. Don't you dare let one of those break on a 14-hour flight. <laughs> oh, God. And, and if oh, the plane don't have Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi is broke, oh, you are in for it. Mm -hmm. You talk about your reputation going downhill, yeah. that will quickly allow your reputation to yeah. go downhill. Yeah. Okay? That's not working. Um, I've seen uh, there's, there's quite a few uh, content creators out there who take flights and review them. Um, and one guy went on to a flight and the entertainment system was not working and mm -hmm. he was going to be on that flight for eight hours. And, uh, he had to end up talking to the flight attendants who ended up talking to the purser who's the lead flight attendant, um, uh, to make sure that thing got fixed. Yeah. Uh, because if it's not fixed, you're going to have one angry person. Mm. Um, when it comes to your, um, your stock and making sure we if you've ever been to an airport and watched an airline getting our aircraft getting prepared you'll see the big truck come up that's a catering truck um and that is providing all of your food mm -hmm. all of your drink everything that you're going to have on there and they have provisions for both first class business and and economy class mm -hmm. uh you know we'll get to the part of you know where you get that from but for the most part uh, you know just to keep it simple um you might have actual fine dining restaurants creating food for the first class restaurant mm -hmm. or for the first class section mm -hmm. and i've had to deal with that before where a restaurant is sending over you know 20 meals for first class mm -hmm. um and they better be warm they mm -hmm. better be good you know yeah. because you got to serve them you know you got to make sure that they're taken care of but in the in in the uh, economy cabin Here's some pretzels and a bottle of water. <laughs> Good luck. You should have ate yeah. before you got on the plane. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Get, get, your, get your half can of Coke, right? Get Not even a full can. can. Right? Half, That's right. You don't even of get a full can. Get a half can of right. beers when you get on. Right? Exactly. But there's going to be instances where some of that, like they said, some of this might break. And you got to be prepared to actually 
fix it. And if you don't have the proper supplies on board to fix those items, it's going to bring down your reputation because yeah. you're going to have angry passengers. That's and you stuff. don't want that. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. good stuff. Yep. Cal Roddy, any thoughts on this? Uh, keeping the passengers happy thing with the ICE's entertainment system? Yeah, yeah. Like two and a half years ago, if you asked me how, you know, um, more my thoughts on how this would even be possible, I would tell you I have no idea. But, mm -hmm. you know, over time, we've seen things like the advancements in the ship resource management system um, mm -hmm. that will, of course, be tied toward the, the possibility of the ISIS breaking down. We've seen the advancement on the active status system with regards to the nutrition levels with food. So they have these mm -hmm. ways, and they're going to be continuing to develop these ways to allow the ability for a mission system or the the this kind of career to be measured, right? So the customer satisfaction mm -hmm. to be measured by the types of food that they eat. If mm -hmm. they eat something that they actually really enjoy, then that's going to affect their NDR or some mm -hmm. kind of HEI or in some way. So that mm -hmm. can be measured. So it, it's not a, a matter of you know, thinking that it's necessarily not possible because there are measurable ways now mm -hmm. that we can see that they're working on. Right. For example, I think it was either last week or week before where we saw a, a, an AI taking up and, and, and eating, I think it was some kind of food or something right. like that. So right. they can oh, even yeah, yeah, yeah. animations as well. Right. So mm -hmm. it was very interesting to see all these things coming together and them building upon it to make, these, make this kind of thing a reality. Mm. Mm -hmm. That is good. I didn't think about that, but yeah. we saw them eating the Big Benny's box, yep. right? Yeah, 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 that was it. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot closer than maybe we uh, than we think it is, Royal. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's go on to the next. That's the ISIS, you guys. If you guys want to know about that again, check the design doc. Let's go on to uh, this one. Uh, Dark Knight. I don't want you to get too excited. This isn't about music. <laughs> it's not about music. All right. It's not about music. It's not about DJing. But they do call it the mix master, all right. And for those of you out there who uh, got you know a little tempted here, you'll you'll appreciate this one. Okay, so go ahead, Kel yeah. Roddy, tell us about the mix master. All right, the mix master. One of the more common service requests is for mixed drink. Passengers key in their order through ISIS, which immediately transmits that that information to the mix master associated with that particular section. The mix master is connected to eight different beverages and has a rotating set of nozzles. Pressing one of the eight associated buttons causes the corresponding beverage to dispense until the button is released. Alongside the seat of the passenger that ordered the drink and the time remaining before a reputational penalty starts to accrue is the formula for the desired concoction. A formula such as 1148 would indicate that, that two parts beverage one one part beverage four and one part beverage eight are required. The quality of the drink displayed on the mix master is determined by how accurately the portions were allocated. If the player isn't happy with the quality of the drink, that they can simply press a key to discard it and start anew. But ships carry a limited supply of beverages, so this <laughs> tactic should be used sparingly. Upon acceptance of a drink, it is moved to a conveyor belt on the side. Thus, players can prepare multiple drinks in a row and then move to deliver them, or one player can mix the drinks and another can focus on getting them where they belong. Wow. While a passenger in coach would be fairly forgiving with regard to slow delivery times and the poor mixture quality, Travelers in business class and up would expect much more and repeatedly disappointing them would have an adverse effect on their opinion of the flight and ultimately the player's reputation. So Cal Roddy's going to be just pushing that seltzer water button <laughs> for the folks in coach. This hard, this hard, Look at these things out the way fast, right? Right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, Cal Roddy, let me throw it on you since you read that. The mix master. What do you think about that the drink? Um, drinking machine, the drinking, yeah. drinker's machine. <laughs> It's, it's very interesting because it kind of makes me think, okay, you know, this kind of task would require crew members, right? Mm -hmm. How willing would – or how many crew members would be required for a, pass or a vessel such as this mm -hmm. in terms of the – how busy it is, in terms of the activity, in terms of the – of the diversity of activities, especially these kinds of orders. Um, would you require or would you prefer um, players because you want these things to be done 
faster than the NPC, or would you, you know, say, okay, based on the passengers that I'm flying and based on the flight, it may not necessarily, you know, rely on paying for a player or a group of players to deliver these things as much as I would, you know, have to pay mm -hmm. um, an NPC crew. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting to, you know, um, in terms of that aspect that I'm thinking about. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it Again, they talk about either somebody who's doing it all, right? Or mm -hmm. one person who's working the machine, another person who's delivering. So you may even split it, right? Mm -hmm. Where the NPC does one job, but the accuracy job might be more the human. I'm going to be yeah. honest mm -hmm. with you. Will there be somebody who wants to do this? Probably. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 Especially yeah. if they yeah. get their free yeah. drinks for free. I mean, they, 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 they <laughs> might, you know, because not to be funny. I mean, DK, you and I, you know, we're into the whole commercial flight thing and everything. And it's mm -hmm. great to be the pilot, right? But mm -hmm. you can't pilot and take care of the passengers. So exactly. somebody's got to take on that role. Uh, they yep. do mention AI blades in here when they were talking <laughs> about the replacement for ISIS. Uh, they do talk about NPCs being able to help. I am curious about capacity, right? Because yeah. that's the other thing that, that you guys mentioned this earlier, DK, you did. If we're flying on, um, let's take a Phoenix, right? Mm -hmm. An RSI Phoenix. And you've got maybe two or three, four VIP passengers or, or passengers, right? Um, yeah, manageable, right? With a with mm -hmm. one person and a crew, or, you one know, bartender, right? Mm -hmm. But when you start getting up to the Starliner, with we still don't know how many seats the full accommodation will be for passengers on that. Right. We've seen configurations with it having double decks. We've seen mm -hmm. it where it's all VIP. We've seen it where it's like mm -hmm. a freaking uh coach bus. You know, I mean, we've seen all these different configurations. But the bigger your ship, the more labor that you're going to have mm -hmm. to have helping you because that pilot once again, can only do so much. We don't even know in the Genesis Starliner if that sucker is even a one-person piloted ship. It right. may be similar to right. a regular jetliner where you need a pilot and co-pilot to right. effectively fly that ship. So, mm -hmm. you know, big is nice, but we've always talked about this in Star Citizen. Big also requires greater demand. Big doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're going to do better. Big means more logistics, more resources, a whole lot of factors, uh, mm -hmm. which is why... Being the captain of a Starfarer versus being the captain of a Vulcan may be, you know, two different worlds, different right? Things. When it's all said yeah. and done, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, good, DK. Let's talk about the mixed master yeah. on your end. What do you So in regards to, you know, you were talking about, uh, you know, number of crew. It's surprising that on a more of an, eco, you know, economy flight, you would actually have less crew than you would on a more luxury first mm -hmm. class flight. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it would be more of a one-on-one -on -one experience for first class and luxury passengers. Right. And on a, an economy flight, you only need a couple people to make sure that at least some people get their drinks. Yep. And, uh, you know, just like they were saying, some of those in coach would be a little more forgiving than those that are up in first class uh, or, or in a luxury class. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they are, you know, those in luxury are getting very well taken care of. You spill their Manhattan, they're not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when it comes to the mix master and people wanting to actually do that job, this is, this is where the whole NPC crew really, really comes into play. Because if you can't find players to fill those roles, you will absolutely have to have npc crew to handle those um you can't and, and as many times as i hear i'm never going to do that job that's why i'm going to need the npc crew then because mm -hmm. i can't rely on players to actually fill those roles mm -hmm. now i might in my you know in the uh in the spaceline org probably be able to find people to fill those roles because mm -hmm. they're you know that's what it's built for mm -hmm. people are there to actually have the spaceline experience um but in regular day to day, mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to be relying on NPCs to handle the large majority of the work. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the co-piloting, <clears throat> excuse me. In regards to co-piloting, I almost see, look at it like the C2, mm -hmm. like the the regular yeah. C2 Hercules, yeah. where you've got just two seats. Mm -hmm. Basically, two people operate the ship, um, and then you would probably have your extended crew, which would be handling the flight attendant mm -hmm. role in the back um and i would imagine that i would be able to get up if i'm piloting the ship be able to get up and let my npc co-pilot handle the rest of the ship and fly the route while i go back and chat it up with the first class customer you know yeah. their first class accommodations yeah. um and um and and i would expect that you know at the same time 
because I think me and Pops were talking about this last night about having NPCs actually in command of the ship, that there might be a possibility of an NPC actually running as a pilot, mm. um, giving me an opportunity to actually go back and act as a purser mm -hmm. uh, in the aircraft and actually, or in the, in the ship and actually telling the other flight attendants what to do. Mm. Um, and that could be a secondary role uh, is, uh, you know, even for a player, as a secondary role is to be back as a purser for the uh, for the cabin mm -hmm. and be able to tell the NPCs what to Making do sure everything and is be able to okay. make sure it's mm -hmm. running smooth that the that the bartender bartender remember the bartender that we have in the game now mm -hmm. they're going to be running the mix master mm -hmm. think about that mm -hmm. um, but being able to tell them what to do yeah. um, and we saw aspects of that with uh, the recent um, in, uh, inside Star, Star Citizen Live when they were talking about telling an NPC what needs to be done, this and that, right. that would be the job that another player could actually take a role for. Mm -hmm. And that might be the more engaging role as opposed to being the person that makes the drinks. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to make the drink and get your passengers drunk, which I would do because <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> okay. Sabotage an NPC. Sabotage. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, okay, yeah, the mix master gang. Um, some of us, would, would I do it? If you pay me the right amount of money, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You pay me the right hey, amount hey. of money, I'll take a flight and, hey, no problem. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this next category. That's past the mix master. We're doing pretty good on our time so far, which is great. We've got a lot of questions for us waiting too. Let's talk about customization and upgrades. You guys might be wondering, what do they mean by customization and upgrades? DK, why don't you read that for everybody? Okay. Passenger transport ships support a considerable number of potential upgrades, including more fuel-efficient engines, larger fuel tanks, additional storage space for consumables and spare parts, quantum stabilizers that can reduce the potential for inducing nausea in and uh, sensitive passengers when traveling at extreme rates of speed, and other things of a more traditional upgrade nature. Many aspects of the customization process, however, are much more subtle in nature and will require more time and effort on the part of the player than simply opening their checkbook. The Mixmaster, for example, accesses an array of beverages to formulate its drinks, but the quality of each individual component is dependent upon its source. Restock your supplies at a city known for more industrial manufacturing than fine liquors, and a more discerning passengers will certainly notice, hmm. regardless of whether you portioned everything out perfectly. And take that into account when determining their overall set level of satisfaction with your flight, which will in turn affect your reputation. Go the extra mile and purchase your liquors at an obscured moon off the beaten path, which might take a bit longer and cost a bit more, and you'll find that it's a bit easier to maintain a sterling reputation given how aesthetic your passengers will be at the high quality drinks you're serving in flight. Okay, let's stop here. Let's talk mm -hmm. about a game mechanic that has just been created. Well, not just been created, but we just heard here. Mm -hmm. DK, do you have time? to go out to that rare moon somewhere and find some rare liquor. Do you have time to really do that? Mm -hmm. See, that might be where right. I hire somebody out there. There you go. go right? now find it for there's me. There's somebody <laughs> else out there, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you're doing your routes and stuff, right? But you're going to yep. need a supplier, right? Mm -hmm. And I might be that trade person, those of you who are y'all Banu merchantmen out there, fast cart, um, who mm -hmm. go to these weird places and come back with that R Romulan ale, right? You know, that mm -hmm. like really special something. But now it's like, hey, I got this stuff I can buy it with. You know what, You to, to make your passengers, your first class passengers happy, that's good to your reputation that you can provide this particular rum or whiskey that comes from someplace we are, Gian, whatever, right? Now I'm a supplier for you, right? Yep. I'm also the person that can go hunt that stuff down. You might be willing to do that for your own ship, but to be honest with you, I mean, do pilots really go out and do, like you said, they're not the ones running the catering trucks and stuff, right? They, you contract mm -hmm. out somebody who does that type of stuff for you. Exactly. So you could see a career for people who provide even certain food stuffs, higher quality food stuff. You mentioned about food coming from a fine restaurant. Maybe you're the guy who goes to Oza on Microtech and gets I, 30 of those dinners from there because that's what's being served for on first class on DK Airlines. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something along mm -hmm. those lines. Calrati, give us some thoughts here on this, this whole customization upgrades. So I just want to touch on what you were just talking about there because that actually ties in with the reputation system. Because for example, if you aren't necessarily, uh, or if you don't necessarily have a good reputation with whoever 
that you'd want to get those kind of you know quality mm -hmm. drinks from and that mm -hmm. also justifies your outsourcing or partnership with someone who has reputation or good mm -hmm. reputation from that location or, or you know town or, or whichever to get those right. resources from and in terms of the customizations you know uh, especially the first paragraph that definitely um, ties in, I think, with the whole um, thing when we were talking about the G forces mm -hmm. and you know being able to provide those kinds of customized customizations and upgrades to um, you know mitigate those kinds of experiences yeah. for those passengers. Who knows? Maybe there will be those crazy passengers uh, because uh, you know you get a, a, a transport career from uh, somewhere in Peru and they actually really like these joy rides. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you output mm -hmm. less or at least, you know, a certain amount of G's. Otherwise those passengers won't really be happy. Mm -hmm. So as, you, mm -hmm. as a result, who knows, you, you may have to, you know, t um, put in some, different upgrades to make those experiences a lot more entertaining you yeah. know so mm -hmm. that's another thing that could also be uh, that could also occur you know we haven't really talked about what it, will it mean to jump through a wormhole yeah. mm -hmm. in, from a position of stability you know what i'm saying right. and we yep. don't mm -hmm. we do know that there will be an aspect of navigating through it and so like you said whether this is yeah when you get your genesis starliner it's pretty good you know it's pretty good but if you buy this certain stabilizer or nav system or whatever it is, it makes your flight better, more smoother. Yep. As you mentioned, people aren't as affected by that ride. That could be a factor later on that we haven't even given consideration to. Most of the time, you're going to be quantuming. Most of the time, mm -hmm. you know, jumping yep. from here to there. Uh, but there are going to be those times where you need to land or refuel or whatever the case may be. And those, th and we haven't seen them yet. We don't know what's going to be uh, on the um, Genesis Starliner component-wise because there's some... May not be required on other ships, but this sounds right. like this ship has some specialties to it that you're mm -hmm. going to definitely want. DK, any mm -hmm. thoughts on that before we finish up on the customization? Oh yeah. So when it comes to you know customization, there's a lot of big things that come into play. When you're talking about content stabilizers, it made me think of pressurization on an aircraft, mm -hmm. um, monitoring and making sure that pressurization is correct because you don't want your passengers passing out when you're going down, mm -hmm. you know, descending into a, mm -hmm. a planet. Mm -hmm. In this case, you don't want to be uh, bouncing all over the place when you're trying to get into, say, Art Corp or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make it as smooth as possible because if they spill their Manhattan, I said it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you got problems. Yeah. Um, you know, nauseous passengers are, you don't want them throwing up all over the place. I saw somebody mentioned about giving them a vomit bag. Yeah, you don't want to give them a vomit bag because mm -hmm. that means that you're not very good and mm -hmm. that's going to kill your reputation. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, there's, there's, there, when it comes to all of the different types of customizations and things like that, if you're willing to put in the amount of time and money into making your ship very well, um, very well uh, built. I, I, I don't know. Just customized. Just customized. Yeah. yeah. Just very well customized. Mm -hmm. um, that is going to have an effect on how you are treated in the verse. Um, you know, if you're if, if you're putting in ratty seats, and you know, yeah, you might have first class, but they've got really crappy bed sheets. Mm -hmm. um, that's not going to help your reputation very well. You know, you're going to want to customize a little bit more. So uh, is this one of the reasons why we have that sheet people. technology that we're working on? You know, <laughs> that's, that's, it. That's, that's it. I had to do that's it, guys. It. I had to do it, okay? That's it. I had it's to bring in the sheets. bed sheets. I had to bring in the sheets, okay? Yeah. I it's all about the sheets, sheets, but they were talking about yeah. quality of beverages. Yeah. You know, yeah. you were just saying it, Griff, you know, mm -hmm. where are you going to get, you know, certain types of liquors from for your passengers? Or maybe you're going to get the nice fizzy water as opposed to the stale water, mm -hmm. you know, as whatever location, you know, yeah. it's just what you bring to the table is definitely going to make a difference. And it might cost you in order to do it. it mm -hmm. Like I said, it might take a little bit longer to get your supplies. But if you're trying to treat a certain clientele, you're going to have to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're going to have to have a reputation with your supplier. Their supplier is going to have to have a reputation from their buyer or whoever they're buying from. Um, there's multiple levels of, uh, of, of things that are going to be happening. So if I want that specific type of ale that nobody can get in pyro, mm -hmm. except for except for Kusanagi, you're the only one that can get that specific ale in pyro. I need to know that you can actually get it. That means you need to have the best reputation you can with the people you're dealing with and be able to get it to me under the radar 
without anybody ever knowing so that I could sell it to, you know, right. Griff in the first class, you know, you, you, and I need to make sure I can always get it. You said something earlier. That's that's part of it, you said <laughs> something that was important, DK. You said that maybe you don't have the reputation, but mm -hmm. there's another player that does. Mm -hmm. So if you yep. don't have the reputation with the Xeon or the reputation with the Banu, that may be okay, but you definitely want to find who is that trader, who is that person that can get into that Xeon space that can do what needs to be done and can bring that yep. item back to you. So again, yeah. we're starting to see how the thread is connecting, you know, with mm -hmm. other players and stuff like that. You could do it yourself, yeah, but there's gonna be somebody out there who definitely is a trader. You know, they they want that reputation so they can get yes. those rare items in the game. Let's hit that last paragraph there at movies, and then we're gonna get okay. into medical. So movies are even more distinctive. Every passenger transport has a movie bank in its hardware room next to the ICE's blades that can store a fixed number of movies and that makes them available to passengers via their ICE's projector. Movies are classified as either classic or modern and all have a popularity rating that denotes how attractive they are to travelers as an entertainment option. The popularity of a modern movie declines over time, so that reliance upon them means continually seeking out newer releases and updating your library. Classic movies retain their popularity and perpetuity, but finding one that's extremely popular is much more difficult. Passengers consider the total popularity value of a movie library, as well as the percentage of the flight for which they had access to it, as a malfunctioning ISIS device can completely eradicate the benefits of a solid movie library. When calculating how pleased they were with the overall level of entertainment options on the flight, don't you dare let that thing break. See, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> now, I got to say, there's a lot of stuff here, right? This is all I mean, right here. You know, it's <laughs> like, there's a lot of stuff oh. here. Now, don't get me wrong. If anybody's going to do it, it'll be CIG. It'll yeah. be interesting yeah. to see mm -hmm. how much of this they can pull off. We know that they're going to put in a system like this, right? Because we understand why it ties into reputation, how you're being graded mm -hmm. on your flight during the journey. So we get that they're going to come up with something. If it's at this mm -hmm. level of detail, it's insane. But I do like I do like the fact that he's thought out this stuff. Uh, and mm -hmm. Tony Z is not, I don't get the impression of Tony Z is just being somebody who's fanciful. He's putting down something that he's hoping to achieve, that 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 he yeah. sees is achievable over time. So I'm, you know, I was already hooked up with the mix master, okay, but then we got into freaking movies, <laughs> classic or modern. I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. But hey, if that's the way they wanna go with it, cool. Uh, DK, let me go to you first on this one. Movies, what do you think about this? Yeah, so yeah, seriously theory crafted on this one. I mean, even Tony Z was theory crafted on this one. <laughs> I mean, it, in, in the real life industry, yes. Mm -hmm it makes a big difference. If you've ever flown on an airline, you noticed on your, you know, on your IFE that, you know, you'll have new movies and you'll have old movies that you've probably already seen before. And sometimes the one that you've seen before, it might, might be the ones that you actually watch because you already know they're either good or you're not so good or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then the new movies, you're like, eh, I haven't seen that one yet. Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I won't. Mm -hmm. um, but it all makes a difference because I'm sure if some of you have been on flights where they have a whole bunch of movies and none of them, are movies that you want to watch mm -hmm. it does happen yeah. um and so having a very um diverse set of entertainment for your passengers is very important and how to find what diversity of entertainment to put on there is mm -hmm. very difficult it's very hard um you know some movies are accepted by everyone the summer is only accepted by some it also depends on the destination you're going to so the people you, you know where you're flying maybe the uh the, the um type of people that fly that airline might only like a certain type of movies, or at least you have a graph of, oh, most of the people that are going in this location might enjoy this movie more than this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's just a, a whole level of, uh, of, of things to, to think about when it comes to that. Now, if they go that far, I have no idea how that's going to go. You know, yeah. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, am I going to be going through a list of movies of five star, four star, you know, whatnot, and then having to determine because these movies mm -hmm. I probably have never, ever 
ever heard of because they're fictional and they exist <laughs> exactly. in a game. You know, I mean, well, like, are they going to allow me to put Pulp Fiction well, on? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me go back to something that, who was it? Uh, Man, who loves story. We, we, we actually have a couple of good things here. Big Black Gaming said, I think I know what movie you meant, BBG. He said, Lord of War or Wing Commander. Okay, those right. are both... <laughs> Those right. are both what Chris are those Roberts two? movies. Well, okay. those are two that we have to put on there. Then, right, right. <laughs> right. Those, you got to put those on. Uh, also, Lichen said something here. It's just important to note that the concept Genesis, it, it, at the time this document was out, was mm -hmm. a, the model available for concept uh, was a 40-person mid-range class. That's and, right. And we'll talk right. about the different ones because there are, believe it or not, some of you may not know, there's a, there's, there was an idea of creating different types of Starliners. Whether CIG is going to yeah. go that way or not, we don't mm -hmm. know. But there was conversation about that, so we can hit on that. Thanks, DK. That's mm -hmm. that's that's really really good stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, let's jump into this next category. Someone already asked about this. I think it was Pops, and it was medical diagnosis and treatment. Now, this was one I didn't expect to find in relation to passenger, but it makes sense. Uh, one of the most challenging areas of passenger transport is in dealing with illness. There's a wide variety of potential maladies that may befall a passenger and each has its own particular set of symptoms. Careful monitoring of a passenger's behavior uh, to ascertain whether a cough is, a com is accompanied by severe and aversion to, to light, whether a sore throat, I'm sorry, a sore neck is accompanied by itching, uh, provide important clues as to the cause of the affliction. Because symptoms will only gradually reveal themselves over a period of time, the best players will need to become adept in keeping an eye on a suspect passenger or two while continuing to fulfill their other responsibilities. An onboard computer allows symptoms to be put in to be put to be input and compatible. I'm sorry, let me read that again. An onboard computer allows symptoms to be input and compatible illnesses to be identified, but faster diagnosis by learning the telltale signs of at least the most common diseases is imperative for those looking to achieve a superlative reputation by dealing with such situations as quickly as possible. I can't believe Tony Z used all those words. <clears throat> Every passenger transport ship is equipped with at least one medical supply cabinet that contains some basic diagnostic equipment that may be of use in determining the cause of some ailments. It also contains a number of different treatments one of which can address or at least alleviate most illnesses that might be encountered. Care must be taken, however, as prescription of the wrong medicine to a passenger can make the situation worse or even cause death. Okay, so <clears throat> basically passengers can get sick. I'm going to assume yep. that we're talking about NPCs versus players. Um, not that players couldn't get sick. We get red out, blackouts. We fall down uh, when the ships move too quickly. Um, but we haven't seen illness yet. It's interesting to see that they mentioned illness because it'd be interesting to see if they put illness into Star Citizen's verse for even players. But we do mm -hmm. know that they could program passengers to become ill. Now that could be triggered by a lot of different things. Karate, you mentioned it earlier. A bad torpedo burrito could be enough to maybe set mm -hmm. somebody off, right? Flying um, through a solar flare and pyro. Solar yeah. flare with mm -hmm. radiation. Uh, somebody <clears throat> who you see getting up and going to the bathroom too many times. There's a lot of triggers that could be visual triggers uh, that they could use to do that. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that they would introduce this as one more thing to be paying attention to. Once again, if you're piloting the ship, you're missing out on all exactly. this stuff. But if sure. you're in the back back there, they're saying not only <clears throat> there are these visual signs that while you're at the mix master <laughs> or whether you're fixing the movie screen, <clears throat> you might be wanting to pay attention to your passengers a little bit, okay? Yeah. Um, let me read this last part, then I'll leave it up to you guys to talk in. Illnesses may transmit their effects through the cabin via two basic mechanisms. <laughs> Fear oh, <wait. laughs> and contagion. <laughs> I just watched Outbreak the other day. That's why I'm laughing, okay? Uh, fear <laughs> represents the concern and worry that a healthy passenger near another appears to be sick would experience, and its effects are directly proportional to intensify <laughs> of, because of the visible symptoms. Fearful passengers will frequently turn and look toward the traveler that concerns them and their experience will continue to impart a penalty to the ship's owner's reputation for as long as the situation persists. Contagion, on the other hand, represents the actual spread of the disease and is only applicable to some maladies. Slow or incorrect diagnosis of a serious issue can quickly spiral out of control, creating a cabin full of zombies, no kidding, 
concerned passengers, or worse, <laughs> a full-blown epidemic that would result in a player's passenger transport license while being suspended for a period of time. Okay, I'm wow. going to throw this out there to you guys first. Go ahead, DK. I'll give it to you first this time. So in regards to medical diagnosis and treatment, so many people, a couple things, many people might not know that on an aircraft, especially on long haul flights, the pilot and co-pilot do not eat the same meal and they don't eat at the same time. Right. Uh, and for various reasons, obviously the one being that if I eat the food and I get sick, I want to make sure that they don't eat the same food at the same time and they get sick. Right. So there's that. Um, also, in order to be a flight attendant on aircraft, you do have a level of education of paramedic duty, uh, mm-hmm. of paramedic knowledge. Uh, so you have to know a little bit about taking care of a passenger that ends up getting sick. So giving the wrong prescription to, uh, you know, to a passenger or the wrong medicine to a passenger, you have to have knowledge of what you're going to be giving them to, so you don't make the situation worse. You also have to know how to contain the passenger in case they actually have uh, something that is um, contagious. Uh, so in this case, you know, they were talking about breaking out into a full-blown ac- epidemic. Um, a knowledgeable crew will know what to do. Uh, Admiral Kusanagi said, has no crew. Admiral, uh, Admiral Kusanagi said, space them. <laughs> space, yo. <laughs> hey, when <laughs> Elite Dangerous, I'm telling you, Elite Dangerous, if I got an unruly passenger, they'd be out the airline. I guarantee it, I, it does happen. Now, in this game, I'm not throwing passengers out the airline. Might be a problem, but I'm sure I, if I have the ability to have a brig, I'll throw them in there. <laughs> isolation. <laughs> isolation, seriously. You would have an isolated period. You mm-hmm. would actually have to isolate uh, mm-hmm. a passenger on board the ship. Um, but there's, you know, those are things that you have to think about. This might actually go into, um, you know, uh, customization. Do yeah. you have air filtration on your ship mm. to be able to, you know, to, to filter out dirty air? Um, are you properly supplied with your medical goods? Um, you know, this goes back into supply. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have the right kinds of medications on board? Do you know where you're going and know that there might be a possibility of having some kind of contagion that could be contracted at that particular location? You, mm-hmm. You've got to be prepared. This is all about preparation. Yeah. Um, you're not necessarily going to have to have a doctor on board but your flight crew is going to need to at least provide some kind of a medical assistance in an emergency until you can get to a landing zone and then take them to a hospital. Um, yeah. That's good. San Groper, oh, San Groper <laughs> says the beatings will continue until passenger ratings increase. So there you I'll go. Look. All right. Duct tape them to their seat. <laughs> exactly. Mummify. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Cal Roddy, uh, your thoughts about this whole medical diagnosis and treatment thing? Oh, man. This, you know, w- this with regards to the whole medical gameplay and active status system, it's all coming together. Because, for mm-hmm. example, I find myself not even needing to use the auto or, you know, auto detect on my med gun when I get injured now. You know, if I'm, you know, if I'm knowledgeable of um, the treatments, I'll just apply dimexetrine or roxfin and that or sterogen you know based on the cues on my you mm-hmm. know my visor so when he talked about the whole you know the cues and those things well i don't expect my flight attendant to be pointing a med gun at me mm-hmm. to be able to ascertain my um you know my illness mm-hmm. maybe you know to the same cues or using some kind of augmented reality kind of um, receiver that they're wearing that that may be able to help them and that may be able to administer these things because i've been wondering okay how are they going to measure these kinds of indications so these can be you know some examples of how the active status and medical gameplay can can come on board in terms of you know uh the the npcs gradually getting ill uh, well we have something with regards to the active status system with regards to hunger and thirst mm-hmm. over time you know your hunger and thirst drops depending on what you're doing or depending on time so if you're infected with some kind of illness who knows that can be a time-based thing similar to the deterioration of your thirst and your hunger. Mm. Uh, it's very curious as to how they're going to implement that whole thing with, with regards to the spreading of a disease. Mm. Though, but who knows how, how that's going to occur, you know? But I'm very excited to see what more they add to that whole medical and active status kind of thing because it's definitely coming together. 
with the gods of what he's talking about right now. Well, Admiral Kusanagi says he don't know what you're talking about, but that red pen of his is all he needs. He says all that, he says you're talking Greek. He says you're talking Greek with all those other medications. I don't care about that purple one or that green one or that yellow one. I just need that red one. That's all he says he needs. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. by the way, if you uh, if you're going to see the javelin, put your helmet on because the uh, the walkway it does not have. Uh, Ooh, good I safety tip. Way. Safety tip of the died. day. Safety tip almost of the died. day. Very cool. Yep. Um, interesting. It's interesting. This is from years ago. The the graphic that we're seeing on screen, but you can kind of see where they were, what they were thinking about. You know, this medical area. You got a medical kit on the ship. Probably this a defibrillator, something type of reading machine, and then of course what we consider now the med gun. They've got mm -hmm. an early version of that on there, which is pretty neat. Okay, let's go ahead and hit one more. Then we've got some questions. We're going to look at a couple of ships, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, flight attendants. Ho, ho, ho. Cal Roddy. Let's talk about flight attendants. All right, flight attendants. Passenger transport ships come in a wide variety of configurations, with the two primary differentiating factors being the ticket classes supported and the number of seats. A single experienced player can likely handle a ship with 20 to 30 seats by themselves. But if they want to graduate to the larger and more efficient ships that dominate the busiest and most profitable routes, they're going to need some help if they wish to keep their reputation intact. Towards this end, players may always invite their friends along on a flight to assist, deciding amongst themselves how best to split up the various responsibilities. At some point, though, most players will seek to implement to supplement their operation with one or more non-player characters, if only to allow the player to focus on those tasks that they find most interesting or whether they truly or where they truly excel. This can be done via traveling to one of the recruiting stations that populate larger cities. These so these business these businesses contain profile information on a large number of job applicants and can sort their personnel database according to their desired job. Every applicant has their own unique mix of skills and knowledge, with the more capable stewards and stewardesses commanding a higher monthly wage. Once hired, a flight attendant remains in the employ and on the payroll of a player until they are dismissed. They remain constrained to the city in which they were hired until transported elsewhere by the player and can be summoned to a player ship at any time prior to departure. They can be directed to focus on only a particular part of a ship and if so desired to only focus on certain aspects of the job. Once assigned to, the, to an area, they automatically begin moving to address the demands of passengers. Okay, um, again, yeah, uh, Tony Z again, laying down some stuff here that several years ago, if evidently he thought several years ago he could do this and it's years later. Um, I'm, I'm really curious to see, as you mentioned earlier, DK, about the uh, SCL that came on the other day where they were talking about AI, assigning mm. certain roles to AI that they do certain things. And evidently we're seeing the fruition of that now because they're talking mm -hmm. about that they're doing it. So like you said, if your ship is broken into like a first class, second class coach or first class business class coach, you can have that steward or stewardess or flight attendant and say, work just, you know, business class, that's it. You know, uh, if you need them to work the mix master, then that's what their focus will be. Um, this is mind blowing stuff to me. I, I'm really curious to see this because uh, until I read this document, yeah. I kept wondering, well, where do we hire these people? You know, are they sitting around the airport or what? But they're saying you go to a joint that's an employment place, hire them, then they're in your employ. And then when you're ready to depart, you can call them and say, hey, report to the spaceport. We're getting ready to take off for a flight. That's kind of freaky to me, um, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't know if that, you know, I mean, if your, your flight crew ever did, it's always going to be where your ship is, right? And, and for the most part, you know, You're the same. Uh, but it, 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 but think about the other sides of the coin to that. Maybe there's a time where you don't take all your flight crew. I'm just really curious to see how they're going to work out this whole employment aspect, you know, because yeah. mm -hmm. uh, they've mm -hmm. talked about that NPCs, when you, when you do hire them, they have to eat, they have to sleep. You know, there's a lot of factors that you have to do outside of their duties and work. So. Right. Uh, Cal Roddy, mm -hmm. let me go to you first this time on this one. <clears throat> yeah, you touched on uh, um, on, a, on a really um, interesting point there, Griff, because I often wondered, okay, they can't just measure, um, you know, the paying of, of of these of these flight attendants and these employees based on time. It it 
that's that can't work it's that kind of linear approach may just make you spend too much money because let's say you're not even doing anything mm. and you have the you know this employee here uh and you know you're just paying them for nothing so maybe you know when it comes to paying them and having them operate and exist in the area maybe the delivery of these kinds of payments and those things and management of, N of the npcs may be dependent on the activity that they have to do mm -hmm. as well as their experience maybe if they have more experience however that may be measured um that can also incur some higher additional wages per unit time per activity um in terms of the um the reputation also i wonder also if the experience of the um of the of the of the flight attendant and their performance would you know directly impact the reputation or rather at, to a particular fraction um you know from start to finish when you actually go through that flight uh so of course most likely if the if the flight attendant doesn't have as much experience uh, that may result in something in your reputation not being increased to a certain design amount um etc cetera, etc cetera. so um all these things um I mean, the earlier bits, I, I, you know, I, it, it was definitely easier to, to see how it can be measured because that's, uh, I mean, you've been hearing me saying measured pretty much throughout the entire stream. So <laughs> that's my perspective on it. And uh, that, this particular aspect is making me very curious because the only thing that we have in terms of paying other players currently is the common assistance speaking, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that is based on time still. Right. So in terms of being able to measure, okay, how much you can pay and deliver that kind of payment to an NPC, do I pay them even though I'm feeding them? Um, the same amount as opposed to if I were to pay that same NPC and I don't have any food for them, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. a lot of things may come into play with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me let me address mm -hmm. a question here because it's a, it's a valid question. Um, the one who no knocks, the one who knocks, asks a question or makes a statement here, and he does ask a question out of it. He says, "I struggle with the tech with this tech. Last time I saw NPCs were standing on chairs and not working at all. So how does this leap happen? Did I miss something? Let's talk about why you see uh, the NPC mm -hmm. standing mm -hmm. on chairs or standing in a T pose, because there is a mm -hmm. reason why you see that in game." Um, yep. and so, okay, Cal Roddy, you're pretty eloquent on explaining the tech. Could you break yep. down as to why people may think that when they see that, that the AI is not working properly? Yeah, sure. So it connected to what, um, I can't remember what, what, what the developer's name was on SCL on Friday, but he said, you know, uh, with regards to the AI, uh, they have all these things working, uh, on the internal build. And then when, when it hits live with the PTU, it's like, what happened, right? So it, it, it mainly, you know, stems from a connection between the server and the client um, and how well the server can communicate that information to tell that NBC what to do. Um, and that's also dependent on how heavy or how much traffic that server is experiencing, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully, once we see, you know, um, more offload of those kinds of, of that kind of work when mm -hmm. server meshing comes, once again, wait for server meshing. <laughs> um, you know, um, we'll see some some better things. Um, you know, with tick rates, to that. Yeah, tick rates change. Yeah. Uh, give you, give you an example. Um, the one who knocks. If you ever get on a server when there's nobody on it, hardly like when you first mm -hmm. get on it, you will see the NPCs are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're walking. They're talking. They're checking their Moby glasses. They're doing all types of stuff. They're not standing on stuff. They're not. As more people come into the server you start to, it starts to struggle and it starts to have problems mm -hmm. or if a bunch of people jump into a server at one point. So mm -hmm. that's one of the ways, that, like, just to give you an idea, when you do see, I mean, there've been times when I've spawned in and I'll see there's like five people in the server and I'll walk around Microtech or wherever and everything is moving around fine. Awesome. There's nobody yeah. doing nothing weird. So know that it is there. But yeah. once again, it's this expansion of getting tick rates and some other things in place that they'll be consistently operating, but that's a very and it's funny. Yeah. It's really funny. Uh, you know, the one who knocks is funny. I went on to the Javelin tour today, and the server was kind of full, and there was a lot going on. And I'm assuming that the server was old. So I, when I went on there, all of the MPs users were just standing, mm -hmm. not doing anything, right. just standing mm -hmm. in a line, whatnot. Over about ten minutes, they started moving, mm -hmm. and they started doing their own thing. Yep. But it took ten minutes for that to, to actually happen. Mm -hmm. It was just a degraded server, yeah. very, very old. And and they were talking about it in SCL that um, it's 
server health does not help, you know, does, it's not helping right now. They mm -hmm. can make it work on their local machines, on their personal machines and whatnot. But mm -hmm. once it gets out into live, yep. it falls apart. There's just too much going on right now. Server meshing. Yep. Yep. So. yep. <laughs> okay. We got one more topic and, uh, yeah, we're going to do a giveaway. Oh yeah. Tonight. I wanted to jump in on quick, quickly on that yeah. flight attendant part. Yeah. Um, hiring. Mm -hmm. So me and Pops were actually talking about this last night mm -hmm. about hiring um, and what you would be looking for when trying to hire an NPC. Um, there is a lot that would go into, I'm assuming, with skills. Now, I'm theorycrafting a little bit on this one, but this is from experience in other games. Um, that I would expect to know the skill of a, per a particular employee before I actually hire them. So I would want to know, are they skilled? Have they worked in this industry before? Mm -hmm. Do they have knowledge of medicine, you know, or being able to, you know, take care of a passenger? How mm -hmm. well do they know it? Because then that might put them in a role of being more uh, concerned with the medical side of passenger gameplay than the uh, service side. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe I find an NPC that's really good at mixing drinks, but not so good at, uh, you know, not so good at, um, you know, helping customers figure out what they're going to eat. Well, I'll put them on a bartending, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's just different things that I would look for in a particular NPC before I hired them. And if they're really good at their job, I'm probably going to have to pay them more for what they're doing. Um, and that comes out of all of my income that I get from that, uh, for that particular uh, route for that one route. Uh, it happens in Elite Dangerous, and I'm bringing that up again because you hire an NPC, depending on how much skill you want that NPC to have is how much you're going to have to pay to hire them and how much your weekly out, you know, how much they're going to charge or you're going to have to pay them per mission. Mm -hmm. um, so you might get hire a very low skill NPC and not have to pay them as much, but they're not going to be as good at their job. And they're going to have to train to get better. Yeah. And then this turn, you end up paying them more to, to get them trained. Or you spend the money on a higher level NPC and not have to spend as much money training them. But there's a give and take. Mm -hmm. you know. So it's, uh, I would expect if I'm going to, say, a uh, recruitment center, that I would have a list of NPCs that are available. And I'd be able to pick and choose the ones that I want. Um, and it's all going to eat into my profit margin. You said that, Corinthian. You mentioned that a lot of work involved in working out your profit margin, and that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. You got to play the game of how much is it going to cost me? How much is it worth it? How much am I going to make on top of it? And what is my net return? Mm -hmm. And that's the whole part of running this kind of gameplay. It's very similar to trading is you got to maximize your net profit mm -hmm. and reduce as many of your expenses as possible. I actually own a company working in, in transportation in real life. Um, and it's all about expenses, gross, and net. And Can I, go back I to want to maximize my net. Yeah. I want to go to something you said earlier because uh, before I forget. You know, again, th th there's a graduation process of this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we said it earlier. You're not, it, uh, we doubt very seriously if you're just going to start out flying the Genesis Starliner. Pops, you asked this question about reputation. Is it linked to all these other things? Yes. To answer that question, yes. Everything in Star Citizen, they've talked about this. Reputation is going to tie into every field. There's no field that doesn't mm -hmm. have something to do with reputation because we don't have a skill tree. So reputation becomes that way for us to pay attention to it. Um, to your point, DK, I may not be able to hire that, uh, that, that flight attendant who has all these skills. First of all, they may be too pricey for me to even think about it. Mm -hmm. So what you do is when you start out in your smaller ship, your Phoenix or whatever it is, 300i, whatever it is you're flying around in, you, that's where you're going to hire the guy who doesn't have a lot of experience because you don't have a lot of experience, right? Mm -hmm. But they're under your employ and yes, we saw this when it came down to Quanta. They learn, they get better. Their experience trees will start to move up as far as what they're good at being. So you right. may start out just like you're starting out. You get that person into your employ. You've done 10, 15 trips with them. Now they start to graduate more. Yeah, you may have to pay them more, but you helped grow them versus saying, oh, I'm going to walk in and get the best flight attendant that's in here. And then you see the price is like 50000 a week. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. heck, you know, I can't do that. But I can hire this person that's starting at 7,500 who's doing these small trips with me. And next time when they come back, now they're worth 12,500. Next time they're mm -hmm. worth 20,000 
over time. So there's a graduation yeah. process with the AI because they told us that they're supposed to be able to learn. The right. other things that Do you, you want to think about- Do you have the reputation to hire them? Not only <laughs> reputation, let me give you some other things to think yeah. about. Not only are they good at mixing drinks, are they good at whatever, or medical? What's their charisma yeah. level? Yeah. Are mm -hmm. they good with people? Has this, is this mm -hmm. flight attendant been someone who's been good or is this flight attendant's charisma level low so that you don't really want this person? They may be good at medical as an NPC, but they suck when it comes to interacting with people. Yep. So that affects your mm -hmm. reputation. There's a lot of variables that they can put in place for us to gauge. And we guys, you guys get charisma and all this stuff from other games, yep. but you get yep. my point. It's not just about mechanics yep. things. It can be also about personality, attitude, um, you know, fatigue, all types of yep. things that they could put in that you as the pilot or owner need to pay attention to when you're bringing these NPCs in. Okay. Exactly. All right, exactly. listen, we got one more thing to hit here and then we're going to, uh, uh, get into the Q and a, and that's touching down and DK's got the last paragraph paragraph here. So go ahead, DK, okay. hit that for us. So touching down upon arrival at the intended destination, the pilot must give passengers an all clear signal from the cockpit in order for them to begin exiting the ship. Immediately upon departing, each passenger will determine how satisfied they were with the overall trip and therefore how the reputation of the ship's owners should be affected. A pilot may force passengers off their ship prematurely. I ain't spacing you yet. <laughs> at any public landing zone, but in such cases, passengers will ignore any experience they, uh, that they had while on board and instead contribute the lowest possible satisfaction rating. For larger transports, one or two premature ejections can easily cause a license to be suspended. Once all of the passengers have exited the ship, the pilot is free to submit a new flight plan to the flight schedule computer. That system also allows for basic transport supplies, food, beverages, medicine, surplus ices units, etc., to be purchased and loaded into your hull while you wait on the tarmac. Within minutes of touching down, then you can again be prepared or prepped for departure. That's life as a passenger transporter always in motion. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you get to start all over again. <laughs> turn around. <laughs> you turn around, right? You turn around and start back up again. Um, yep. I, and we're going to look at some some of the, very quickly. We are going to look at some of the ships and talk about them very quickly. We're not going to do a whole lot on them because we've covered ships separately. But we do want for maybe people who don't know or ships that maybe you haven't considered might be good for doing type of passenger travel. We want to talk about those a little bit. Um, DK, you already know. You've worked in the industry. I've worked in the industry. Yep. We know that there's a whole network of work that goes around at an airport, mm -hmm. right? I mean, being a pilot mm -hmm. is one thing, but there's maintenance. There's checking the aircraft, there's restocking an aircraft, there's cleaning the aircraft, yep. Um, yep. whatever, it, everything it takes to get everything right back again to turn around as quickly as possible uh, mm -hmm. to get things, because you can't start telling people to board or anything until all those nope. things are done, right? Let me um, tell you the logistics mm -hmm. of running, because I've worked in all aspects of airline. I've worked at ticket counter, I was supervisor at a ticket counter. I ran the gate, mm -hmm. I ran load operations, and I ran the ramp. Mm -hmm. And I've done all aspects of that. The logistics of making sure a plane gets in and out is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when you've got about 20 people that you're just trying to direct and you're talking to dispatch on the phone and you're trying to get loads and you're getting passengers all you know, corrected and you wanna make sure that the passengers get on time, on board at the right time that they're not sitting there waiting for the plane to take off. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole logistical operation with mm -hmm. all of this. You, you got, I've got to manage how the fuel's going to get there. Who's bringing the fuel? Are they going to get there on time? They yeah. better show up on time and they better put in the right amount. Or I'm going to have to make a phone call to dispatch and tell them that the fuel load is off and we need to offload cargo mm. and then they got to fill out a new flight plan send it to me i got to give it to the pilot the pilot's going to say no i don't like that idea <laughs> you know there's just a whole bunch of things that go on mm -hmm. um but this is exactly how it it runs when you once that plane touches down and pulls into the gate mm -hmm. that's the ground crew's uh job and that takes care of making sure all those supplies get on board mm -hmm. making sure that everything is replenished you know, making sure that passengers get off safely and passengers get on safely. Mm -hmm. There's a time constraint uh, because again, you got to now prep for departure and take off on time and make sure that you get to your next destination on time. Now, and let me tell mm -hmm. you in real life, if you're late, one minute will cost <laughs> you 
ten thousand dollars mm. for some airlines. Mm. One minute late. Yes. So you better not be late. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Cal Roddy, he just listed all these different things that need to be done. But in the real world, there are different people who handle all that. In this mm -hmm. world, right. it's the pilot. It's you the mm. player. Um yep. forget one of these things and you may have some problems, right? Yeah, I, I guess my general question I want to ask you is how do you feel about, I mean, me and ZK, we're big aviation buffs, so we're crazy about stuff like this, but right. you as a player, is this too deep? Is it deep enough? Uh, unrealistic? What do you think? What, do you, what are your feelings about the mechanics that we've read through all this so far? So, so far, I'm pretty excited about it. It's just mm -hmm. that, you know, um, I'm wondering how it's going to actually translate into the game because, you know, some of the things, for example, like... Uh, I mean, the the rating and the satisfaction rating, you know, we see examples of that after we rescue somebody or after we transport somebody down. So mm -hmm. that whole connection is there and they may build on it most likely, of course. Um, so in terms of, you know, Tony Z's explanation, I'm really excited about it. I don't think, you know, um, many players will be um, against it. Um, the more interesting bit is, you know, when we start testing it, you know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. closest experience that we can have to what he's actually conceptualizing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the part that I'm really looking forward to. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's 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 too deep, you know, yeah. based on you know where we're going with the other mechanics and other professions. I think this will definitely be a very interesting profession yeah. um, for those mm -hmm. who are casually going into it and those who are you know really really wanting to invest your time and energy into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very similar yeah. to cargo refactor. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me go to something the Corinthian asked. He asked a really good question, and then we're going to get to our regular Q and A. He says, "What concerns me is how many years will it add to the development." And let me, let me share some things with you. Some of you may remember this. I don't think it's going to add years like what we're thinking about, maybe what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Three years ago, four years ago, there was a demonstration at CitizenCon at Microtech. This is when we got Microtech. And they showed us an NPC flight that took place. If you remember, it was a Valkyrie. It was a white Valkyrie mm -hmm. that departed from one of the buildings at Microtech, loaded up with passengers, flew to a destination. In fact, the, the aircraft landed People got off it, other people got on it. They took off, flew to their destination, parked, and people got off and got on there. It's already there. Yep. Mm -hmm. That part is already there. Moving NPCs back and forth is already there. Now we get into the AI aspect. We just talked about the fact that we saw this week where they showed AI being able to sit down and eat. They talked about AI being able to be assigned roles to do things. This is already mm -hmm. here. Again, there are some aspects of the game that aren't being implemented, first of all, because we're just in freaking Stanton, right? Mm -hmm. Even though Stanton is the mm -hmm. test bed for a lot of things, we've got to be able to expand Stanton out. A couple of years ago, CIG had already told us they're doing their best to manage things because they've crunched so much into Stanton. One of the reasons why we lost Levski and some other stuff was because they've already got a lot of stuff going on there. Um, mm -hmm. But to go to this next level, I, I'm not saying it's not some time away, what I am saying is that it's not as far away as maybe we may think it is, because this isn't new. This design yeah. document was written yep. years ago, and I guarantee you they have not just been sitting on it because passenger transport has been coming up about something that they want to start seeing implemented. So I think that as the AI come together more and so much of this game is still based on AI, the purpose for this will be there too. Now, we can already do passenger transport among ourselves, technically. We do do it. Mm -hmm. We can. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. But for it to be at this AI level... That's going to be something that we're looking forward to, but that's a, a very, yeah. very fair question. Thanks yep. for asking mm -hmm. it. Let's jump into some of the other questions we have. Um, and if we have time, we'll look at some ships because we're already pushing up on our clock here. Uh, viewer <laughs> question number one, we talked about this earlier about the Zeus. Is the Zeus a transport ship? That was from Pops in Space. We yes, already sir. addressed that one. Pops also asked, do you know if transport ships have the need for medical doctors, chefs, and other personnel? Yes, we just talked yep. about that a little yeah. bit. We talked about mm -hmm. the qualifiers for people who are flight attendants, that flight attendants have that as a requirement. Nothing wrong with having an onboard doctor. Cruise ships do it. Let me say this to you, Pops, if you remember, I'm not bragging on my ship, but the 890 Jump has a full commercial kitchen on it. Full sure. commercial kitchen. Not that kitchen with the microwave that y'all go on for y'all little ships. But it has, no. But there's a full commercial. On yeah, they, yeah they, <laughs> there is a full commercial kitchen with re, with refrigerators and all types of stuff. And yes, there will probably be some people who love cooking, and they'll be like, yep. "Dude, you pay me enough money, I'll come up and cook up a storm in that bad fella." So yes, you know. yes. 
Um, let's see. The Corinthian says, so for reputation, is it by player? Can, can it be by company or org? Such as if I'm a pilot for a transport org, will it be impacted by other pilots activities? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we do. Mm. I think, I think I, they've talked mm. about org reputation in relation to organizations, but you know mm. what? Org 2.0 has been talked about so doggone much. I don't know whether oh, or not yeah. individual yeah. players will affect the reputation of an organization in game. We may hear yeah. about people's reputation. Mm. Uh, they're pirate org, but how much of a pirate org? I don't know if there's a gauge like that. Have any of you guys heard anything? It'd be interesting to be to see how that is, because with with the with the other org that I was talking about, Snack Air, it'd be interesting to see if that org is in game as its own entity, mm -hmm. and that anyone associated with that org Impact can affect it. the reputation mm -hmm. of that particular entity and i'd be interested to see if that mm -hmm. how that's going to work out because if that if that does that's pretty darn cool yeah but you also got to control your knuckleheads right yeah you got to control exactly. your knuckleheads that's the yeah. case, right that's absolutely cool. right all right uh we've got a question from fast card here he says dk how do people gain reward points on your space line or, or your airline uh, I can't imagine it's by the mile. How would people gain reward points? Are you, you going to give out reward points? Or are you going to give out, you're, you're gonna give out flat fears? Maybe like we saw in Red Line, he's going to give out some flat fears. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's a bottle of water. No. <laughs> no, I haven't worked that out yet, Fast Cart. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do the miles or anything like that. It, it's, it's probably going to be how you treat my crew, uh, you know, and, and, and what your reputation is uh, among the community. So if you're one of those a-holes out there mm -hmm. that everybody knows about, you ain't getting a mile. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Of water. Yeah. Sure you get a bottle of water and pain. goodbye out the door. <laughs> yeah. Pops in Space asked the question. I think we also answered this with Pops already. He says, do you think reputation will also be linked to medical, food prep, and more? Um, you know, that's a, that's a good question on a ship. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. If I'm the chef and I'm cooking on that ship, uh, will they outline something about cooking? I haven't heard anything about cooking as far as reputation mm -hmm. yet, Pops. Not saying that he can't, because they are saying, like, when you're at that mix master, that you can mess up a recipe, right? Right. Um, and if that recipe's no good, um then the NPC can have the drink, taste it, and like, nah, I don't like this, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, can that happen with food that's being prepared? Can we make food? Can we get to a point where we're preparing food, we give it to somebody, and they can rate us? Now, there will be reputation for us as players, as you know. Uh, your reputation could be, for example, if you pick up a beacon to rescue somebody, or medical, right? And you go there and help them out, they will be able to say, hey, this person's giving them five stars you know they were trustworthy they didn't try to rob me they got here quick i didn't have to wait a lot of time they knew what they were doing when they got here um then you get the person who comes they don't know what to do they shoot you with the wrong drug and a medical gun and make you pass out you know you may not want to give them a good rating um mm -hmm. so it will be interesting to see if they do that with food i would love to see uh yeah. because we do know the cooking well we think cooking is going to be effective now maybe all the food in this game will be prepared already and it won't be but i'm hoping mm -hmm. based upon when i look around that doggone kitchen in that 890 there's a lot of raw mm -hmm. foods and seasonings oh, yeah. and all types that's of stuff in there. So for, for I'm the hoping that, yeah, yeah, I'm that's hoping not that, catered. That's cooked on yeah, site. Exactly. And mm -hmm. some of you do have ships that have decent sized kitchens on them where you can put things or refrigerators. So uh, yeah. we'll see what happens with that one. Okay. Um, let's see. It is almost nine o'clock. I tell you what, we're not going to go through pictures, but we will do is talk about what are some suggested ships if you're interested in transport and I'm gonna put it up with my panel. What are some ships that you guys would shout out for people who are interested in doing transport? Aurora, I'm just joking. <laughs> so I would, I would totally go for, I mean, if you're, for example, um, you're um, doing some kind of transport in a not so you know luxurious area, um, perhaps you'll go with a Cutlass, with a Cutlass Black, right? I say that because, for example, depending on the location that you're flying in, uh, who knows, maybe someone may be scanning your ship mm. and they see, all right, they may judge you, be it an NPC or a player, um, based on the type of ship that you're flying. Mm. So if you're flying through Pyro mm -hmm. in, you know, uh, a, a very luxurious 600 I or so, or some kind of luxurious ship, mm. uh, you may be approached differently as opposed to somebody who's flying something like a Cutlass Black, mm -hmm. right? Who's transporting players just in the back of it. Mm -hmm. um, so who knows? So a Cutlass Black is definitely going to be my thing uh, in terms of the grittiness behind it, um, as well as, 
you know, something that is uh, similar. Uh, who knows a couple of steel? You may actually have some use for that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so those kinds of ships, depending on, at, at least in, in in the immediate run, mm -hmm. you know, pyro is is the kind of thing that I'm thinking about. So those kinds of ships in Danger, terms of going through dangerous areas. Yeah. Jod Jod asks a question that I can kind of tie into that. He says, "Will there be any sort of reputation for criminal airlines, cartel transport, revolutionary air mercenaries? Uh, is the clientele separate from the transportation service?" Good question. Right now, mm -hmm. you know, there are mechanics in there with the law system. Depending on where you go with jurisdictions, if you get caught harboring somebody who has a bad, you know, criminal stat. And I'm going to, I don't know about reputation yet, Jaja, that's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> but I would assume uh, if their crime stat is bad, you know you're going to catch heat for transporting them. If their <clears throat> reputation is bad, I don't know if there's going to be impact on that. Because if you, because the reason why I'm saying that is because if you deliver them safely, you want them to rate you as being good, right? Because you're just a neutral party. You're just moving people right. back and forth. Now, mm -hmm. if they come mm -hmm. up with something that says, you know, you went through nine tails with some people who are the enemy of nine tails, Right. And there's some way that mm -hmm. that gets detected that they may put in the game that you catch heat because you've got them on your ship. Possibility, right? They could come up with something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cal Roddy, I like that idea. You know, you've heard me say this before. When I want to get around and want nobody to mess with me, I'll jump in Aurora or something like that. And people leave me mm -hmm. alone, right? If I jump <laughs> in something bigger, then I got to worry about somebody messing with me. Exactly. Uh, DK, which ship would you shout out? We'll, we'll give you guys a couple other ships to bounce. Which ship would you bet mm -hmm. out for transport? Uh, you know what? I, the 400i, now mm -hmm. I'm an origin guy. I'm an origin guy. Mm -hmm. 400i makes a good prospect for a small yeah. port ship. Mm -hmm. It's quick. It's versatile. You know, it, it has enough amenities to keep two, uh, two, two people happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if I wanted to rent out the captain's quarters for a VIP, I could, mm -hmm. if I just wanted two passengers and they've got a quarters to stay in, they've got one, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's got enough to you know to to provide for a small amount of passengers and because that ship is good solo uh you would be able to take on at least two passengers in comfort yeah. um and it works out very well i think that's a perfect ship for a uh, small time passenger running uh under the phoenix yeah. because the phoenix right. would be the one to go up next on top of that for me i'm, I'm going to throw something in here on cal Roddy's point when he mentioned about the cutlass i like the idea of the cutlass uh, I like the idea of the 400, but both of those ships, no matter what, range is always going to be a factor for you. And you mm -hmm. have to think about how far you can go in a ship. Now, here's something that some people may not think about. Some people may have thought about. I had this happen to me the other day. I had somebody who came after me and I was trying to go to one location and I had jumped. I had to jump a couple of times, several times. But the fact that I had a ship that was a 315, that gave me range. Ah. I was able to go like and not have to worry about it. If you get the mm -hmm. wrong ship, and you have to reroute, you have to detour. If you're just supposed to land at Hurston and Hurston has a windstorm going on that's so bad that you can't touch down, you're not only your reputation, can you get to another destination even yep. to put your people exactly. down? Yep. Mm -hmm. If you have to stop yep. for fuel, you're vulnerable. So mm -hmm. you want to be able to get as much range as possible out of a ship. That means good quantum drive that gives you range because sometimes even having the, a good quantum drive, a fast quantum drive can be detrimental if it's eating your fuel up. If you've got exactly. to stop two and three times for fuel versus, and I've had this happen before, I've used a st in stock quantum and go from R Corp all the way to Orison nonstop. I put a really good one in there. That sucker ate fuel up, I had to stop and get fuel, which means I was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to stop when I was in quantum before. So those are the type of things that you want to think about if you're doing transport as well. Because if something comes up and you've got to extend your range for some reason, you want to know that you can do that. If you're taking the shorter mm -hmm. range ship like a Cutlass, that's cool. Just be aware of what your range capabilities are. Because right. I like both and suggestions. Griff, mm -hmm. Actually, that brings up one thing that we said we weren't going to forget about mm -hmm. escorts. Yes. Let's talk about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, let me give you real my quick. ship. Yeah, let me give you my ship of choice. Um, mm -hmm. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. There are obvious ships you guys know that are built around transport, not luxury, but transport. Yep. We know that the, the, the you said it earlier, the touring ships, for example, 600i is built around it. 890 jump is built around it. Uh, the Phoenix is built around being yep. able to go good ranges and of course comfort and all that other stuff and these ships have kitchens in them they have places to make drinks uh they have places to sleep uh they have good fuel they and pretty defensive cape good defensive capabilities um the little ship that i actually like still is the 85x i like that little oh, thing is like a yes. uber it's fast if, if you're talking about on a planet if you're going from area 18 to area 16 uh if you're doing a short range jump with somebody to get them there fast mm -hmm. 
uh, land on top of a roof, drop somebody off. Uh, I love that ship. It's it's very mm -hmm. quick, agile. Yes. It sucks Definitely. in bad weather because of them short wings, but it yes. is good to fly and a lot of fun to fly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, who is that that just followed us? Abi Abiotic Fur. I be hope I said it right. Abiotic Fur. Abiotic yeah, fur. Yeah, thank you for the follow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, did we get another question? I hear you, Red Wolf. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, okay. Let's let's uh, talk about escorts real quick, and then we're going to do our, our yeah. giveaway, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, escorts. How do you feel about them in, okay. in in civilian transport? In civilian transport, there should be no need for an escort mm -hmm. because these are civilian ships, and you attacking a civilian ship should immediately get you a crime stat and or arrested and thrown into prison. In real life, and I'm uh, and I'm going to bring yes, it's. It's a game, mm -hmm. but there should be no need for an F-16 to follow a 737 from Los Angeles to San Francisco. That's, that in, that's, that's in real life. That's in real life. Now, going from Hurston to it, uh, Microtech, there should be no reason for me to have to have an escort. What, one, what, what would be a reason? I, the only reason I would need one, VIP transport. Okay. If I am transporting a president of state mm -hmm. or somebody of very high dignitary, Yes, I could see the need for an escort. Mm -hmm. But if I am just taking 50 passengers from one place to another that are all economy, there is no reason so, why I should be so getting you're, attacked. So you're flying through pyro yes, yeah. on your way to... I wouldn't be oh, going through pyro. Wait, wait, let me tell you. I wouldn't oh, be going through pyro. Oh, you're gonna I make would sure. find a way around. Oh, you're going to make sure. Okay, in, okay, okay. In this day, there is airspace, and there is certain airspace you just do not fly go over. Go through, okay, okay. You just don't go over. You so you would avoid. Way you take the long way. You, you take the long way. Okay, you would take the long right. way. Okay, all right. You have to, you, yeah. Okay. Got to okay. carry your passengers, you know? Your passengers are important. If you take them through dangerous space, that affects your reputation. Mm -hmm. If you're known for an airline that is very well reputable, uh, reputable but, it, for but it could be service, good. It could be good for your reputation if you're able to pull it off. Maybe if you're, you're rated good, off, right? Maybe, maybe, okay. but you're okay. also putting your you're also putting at your risk. passengers at, at danger. Risk. Okay, okay. At a very high danger, and they would and, and if you get caught. And right. something should happen, your reputation it will tank immediately. All right, and that, that is why. Mm -hmm. That is why I'll be taking the safer route and only going with the crazy passengers. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care they about it. it. They All, right. Just throw okay. All right, okay. So here, okay, Calrati, check this out. The ship we're yeah. going to do a giveaway on tonight. All right, the Legionnaire. Right. All right. You're traveling. And a legionnaire, they disable you. Now, to, to DK's point, I, I'm God. You don't get me started. <laughs> I would hope that people aren't blowing up Genesis Starliners. Okay, I would hope that they're not. I really Straight would hope terrorism. that they're not. Okay, <laughs> I would, but but, okay. but I can see somebody dropping a snare, disabling the ship, and they want to board it. Okay, right. maybe they want to rob us, right? They want to get mm -hmm. money or whatever, or put a ransom up on the ship, something along those lines, right? Uh, what do you think about that, Calrati? Is that a is that something that could happen? That you know, yeah, we're not going to blow up, you know, forty mm -hmm. passengers, NPCs. That's going to get us a lot of trouble, but we will stick these suckers up some type of way. You exactly. know, pilot, you want us to release your ship? You got to drop us, you know, five million right here, right now. What What do you think, Calrati? All I'll say is if there's a way for me to understand the VIP-ness of each and every passenger and I can, you know, help the pirates <laughs> say, hey, you want this VIP in exchange for letting us go? It's okay, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Everybody's going to agree with me because they're going to be safe. They don't have to say uh, what happens to the other passenger. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Some checkings could be a thing. You know, uh, I'm yeah. working with a hijacker. Yeah. I mean, Hijacking could be a thing. You would have to have onboard security personnel. Y'all know, you know y'all know whose airline not to fly on to. tonight, right? Y'all know whose airline not to fly on. Okay, you you already heard it. You heard it here. Tom Roddy's gonna sell you out. Oh my <laughs> god! Dinner. You guys heard it here. Oh my god. Okay. Well, I think we got all of our questions. In. Yeah, we got all of our questions. Yeah, in. Jot, Jot was our last one. Oh, so I'm going to leave you guys with this last topic. Okay. Right? Okay. No need to discuss it. But what about civilian and passenger vehicle transport on the surface of a planet from point A to point B? Oh. What about the logistics of that? Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. 
Interesting Good. idea. Interesting idea. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Vehicle transport would definitely be a thing. You got to move a vehicle. If you got a C2, you, gotta, you can help move vehicles from one place to another. Okay. But what about on driving on land? You'll be a lot more vulnerable. But that's that's true. And oh, if you have a vehicle that can uh, that can harbor, what is that? Uh, what is that? Anvil transport, um, Spartan. Get a yes, Spartan, Spartan uh, yeah. set up to move pass uh, move people back and forth between uh, outposts. As long as it's got a low signature, yeah. you might mm -hmm. be able to pull it off. Yeah. One who knocks. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that sub. Thanks oh, a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right, you. gang. We're gonna jump into this this giveaway real quick. Okay uh let's go ahead and knock this out we want you guys to uh we hope you enjoyed the conversation tonight we know there was a lot of information here tonight uh but we're gonna go with uh we're gonna do some uh yacht club stuff here we're gonna do exclamation point ship me if you are interested in being in the drawing for a anvil legionnaire i was gonna say type in legionnaire but there'd be too many typos and somebody would be mad <laughs> So right. I'm like, okay, we just gonna do something real simple. So if you're interested in getting a um, uh, an Anvil Legionnaire, and we'll definitely give you the one with the new skin, all that cool stuff, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, and put that up right now. So go ahead and chime in on that. We got our Q and A out of the way. Um, while folks are coming in for that, we want to talk about a couple things that are coming up. Uh, one of them is we have a Bar Citizen coming up right mm -hmm. next Ooh. saturday next saturday uh we are doing a um virtual bar citizen actually i got these in the wrong place i got like one in front of the other this should be over here and this should be over here look at that high yeah, technology we where do we go no, all right there we go yeah oh i forgot to put <laughs> you guys on the where? screen it's That's just me right. okay uh <laughs> next next saturday on the 28th we are doing a virtual bar citizen uh this is the biggest virtual bar citizen that we've gotten so far we'll put the link in chat for you you need to register for this it'll be on zoom this will be for invictus 2952 we're also going to do a virtual version we're trying to work out doing it virtually too by the way in in game so even though we're going to be on zoom we're hoping to be in game too so please sign up for it uh if you've never been to bar citizen before we have folks from all over the globe that participate in it we get some folks from cig that drop in from time uh, they've dropped in every time not time to time they've dropped in every time hopefully they'll be here for this one so hopefully you guys can join us for that. For those of you who are in the Midwest, uh, Soul Citizens is sponsoring uh, a Chicago bar citizen in Chicago. If you're in Milwaukee, if you're in St. Louis, if you're in Indiana, if you're in Minnesota, whatever, if you want to come into the Midwest and hang out with us, we are going to be sponsoring a bar citizen on June the 4th. It's just three weeks away uh, or two weeks away. Uh, June 4th is going to be at the uh, Goose Island Brewery. Uh, on Clyburn in Chicago. And it's going to be on a Saturday at 6 p.m. Chicago time till 9 p.m. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun. You'll get to meet some of us. DK is from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. Uh, Green Eye Gal's from Chicago. Uh, Ops Chief is from Chicago. Uh, I think um, uh, you, Maiden Ariana. Maiden Ariana is going to be there, I think. Is Maiden Ariana mm -hmm. going to be there? Yeah, she is, yeah, because she's in, right? Yeah, Maiden Ariana's coming. So, so yeah, so there's a lot of folks in the area that are going to be there. So hopefully you guys will be able to join us uh, for those two, uh, those two cool events that are coming up. Who was that who just gave us the, um, gave us the thingy? Oh, Athy, thank you, Athy, thank you for the resub. Thank you, thank you Athy, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, other than that, we also want you guys, you guys know that we've been doing this big push and it's 139 of you all here. So you all need to make this happen since we're doing this giveaway. We've been doing a big push for the Astro Pub for Paul Shelley that CIG would put with like what we could, we've nicknamed it. He has a nickname is we call it the Astro Dance. All right. We want to see this become an emote in Star Citizen. All right. We want that to become an emote. So mods, can you put that link in for everybody in chat right now? I think we were around like 90 links the other day when I looked at it and we need that bad fella to jump. We needed to jump tonight there are 139 of you half of you may have done it last time the other half of you can sign up for that go over there and upvote that right now don't wait till later because you'll forget upvote 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 it all right wow the one who knocks thank you for giving out those four oh, community oh, gifts oh, yeah. thank you appreciate i totally it. missed that thank yeah. you so much for doing that thank you thank you we appreciate that so you all come out and support us with this because we want Paul Shelley has done so much between adding lore interviews, mm -hmm. uh, bringing out new streamers. He even was one of the first people that let us come on his show. 
Uh, and I think this would be a really cool tribute to someone in our community that has done so much for the community and doesn't ask for anything back other than just to have a good time when we visit with him. So you all go to that link and click on it. And yeah, I think that's that. Um, I know I had something else. No, that's it. Yeah, just those two things. Okay, so we're ready to do the giveaway. Is everybody in? Hopefully you guys have done exclamation point ship me by now. Looks like we got plenty of people in here. We got almost 50 eligible people. That means the other 150 y'all already got one. So y'all don't need one, <laughs> okay. which I understand. Hey, man, hurry up. Which I don't understand. Y'all got y'all token. Y'all okay. got y'all token. Y'all don't need more. it. So I come through. Thank you, reload. For the reload. reload. Thank, Thank you, you dude. Seven, seven months. months. Next week. Yeah, next week. In fact, uh, folks from Tesla. I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll get that in a minute. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're ready. All right. So we got fifty-three people in. All right. Everybody's in. All ashore. Who's going to shore? Exclamation point. Ship me. All right. Get ready for this. Let's get ready to punch up on a second. On the count of five, four, mm. three two, one, boom, who have we got? Uh, B -N -B -S -N -T -A -D -Info. Boom. There it is, I see him. All is right. he there? Did are he, you there? Did he respond? Boonstot Info, are you there? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah they is are. He? All, right. All right, he's there. Awesome. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. All right, you win. <laughs> awesome, you win. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, go ahead and hit us up. Uh, you can you can DM us or you can uh, send it to, uh, what is our thing? Soulcitizens at gmail.com. We need your RSI email that you use for the game. And we will get that out to you uh, ASAP. Yeah, we just got to get it and send it out. So yeah, definitely send us congratulations again. You can send it either through Twitch or you can send it to soul citizens with an S at gmail.com. And we will do that. Okay. Um, am I forgetting something? I probably am, right? Next week, right? Is that what I'm going to now, guys? Next week? Yeah. yeah. Right up yep. and next week. All right. Next week. All right. All right. Next, next week. Uh, let's talk about next week. Uh, Thursdays, our show Soul Talk, hosted by Fast Cart and one of us, usually me, but sometimes mm -hmm. some of us are doing it, uh, is on Thursdays. We moved it up by one hour. We used to be 10 p.m. Eastern time. We are now 9 p.m. Eastern time. So those of you who are on the East Coast can go to bed and uh, not have to stay up so late. So one hour mm -hmm. earlier now, 9 p.m. Eastern Ooh. time for Soul Talk. That's our roundtable discussion with the community on YouTube. On Saturday, 3 p.m., we moved this one back two hours forward two hours i should say uh to 3 p.m eastern time so those of you who are on the west coast don't have to get up so early to talk to us and even dk who's in chicago he can sleep later now oh, uh, yeah. 3 p.m <laughs> eastern time 3 p.m eastern time you guys can join us that's our one-on-one -on -one conversation that we have together and i think fast car's going to be on with me next week when we do it so we had Excellent. a good we had a really good show yesterday by the way we had a lot of fun and then finally on next sunday uh, we will be doing our review of Invictus. This will be also post bar citizen, virtual bar citizen. So we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. everything that we saw. It's only like maybe one more day, I think, after that, where the thing's going to be going on. Uh, but we're going to be talking about everything that's happened with the manufacturers, our own review, and as special guests, we have we have people, members of Test Squadron who are going to be coming on board to be on with us. For them as an organization, they're one of they're they are the largest organization in the Star Citizen mm -hmm. universe, and they're going to be talking about their feelings about Invictus, about combat, all this other great stuff, and about their organization as well, which is my organization too. So that's going to be next week, okay? Uh, other than that, did we cover all the bases? Are we going yeah. with him or someone else? I guess we're going with him, Admiral. That's who you gave me, unless you tell me somebody else. I think that's who we're going to go with. Oh, I got one. If you come to uh, Origin Day at Invictus, yeah, come on, come hang out on Origin Day. <laughs> you <laughs> might meet some folks there. Ah, you try to get folks some to people there to Origin hang out. Day. Yeah, Origin come to Origin Day. Day. Yeah. Wow. You know what? Yes, <laughs> Admiral, I am going to do somebody because there was somebody who's been hooking us up big time. So I'm, I am going to redirect tonight, but thank you for asking me that. We are going to do a raid on, and hopefully we can beat him to it. Oh yeah. We're going to raid TV Liquid. <laughs> We're going to raid TV Liquid, gang, okay? So when you guys get over there, I'm hitting it. You all make sure y'all give a shout out to TV Liquid when you get there. Say you came from the Soul Citizens. If you like what you see, of course, follow him, uh, but give a shout out. Hopefully we'll see you guys on either Thursday or Saturday. Don't forget to register for the Bar Citizen on Saturday. If you've never been, you'll thoroughly enjoy it. You'll have a lot of fun. And of course, join us again next Sunday. 
DK, Cal Roddy, yes. you're awesome. Thanks for all the reading tonight. You guys, no, you take care. Awesome. We appreciate you guys. And as always, peace, love, and soul. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Peace out, fam. Take care, everybody. See ya. Oh, sick.